All right, folks, we're live. It's Thursday, the 28th day of January. I'm cutting into the intro transmission. It's so important. Alex Jones here. We've got Ron Paul, the former congressman on the Martial Law War Powers Act that even a Democratic senator has said it is, coming on in about two hours. We're behind the scenes talking to the Trump people right now about things that are happening with the debates tonight. I'll give you the inside baseball after the break. But first, here is John Bounds' report. And our reporters are in Oregon right now with huge developments as well. Stay with us. Now that the Bill of Rights have been largely destroyed by our corporatized government, President Obama has decided to go for the meat of the American Constitution. The war powers of the Constitution. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the United States Constitution, sometimes referred to as the War Powers Clause, vests in the Congress the power to declare war. This resolution is a total rewrite of the War Powers Clause of the United States Constitution. Let's be clear about that. It is essentially a declaration of international martial law, a sweeping transfer of military power to the president that will allow him or her to send U.S. troops almost anywhere in the world for almost any reason with absolutely no limitations. So while the East Coast was buried under record snowfall, Obama's faux Republican minions, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell, scuttled another dangerous fast-track bill into the halls of the most hated Congress in U.S. history. The legislation makes the unconstitutional Iraq War authorization of 2002 look like a walk in the park. It will allow this president and future presidents to wage war against ISIS without restrictions on time, geographic scope, or the use of ground troops. It is a completely open-ended authorization for the president to use the military as he wishes for as long as he or she wishes. Even President Obama has expressed concern over how willing Congress is to hand him unlimited power to wage war. The Foreign Relations Committee, whose chair, Senator Bob Corker, suggested that a new authorization for use of military force was unlikely to happen and that President Obama currently has the legal authority he needs. Corker's authority was bypassed by McConnell's treasonous fast track. And Senator Lindsey Graham bleated out to reporters, if the Democrats don't want to give this to Obama, then stand up and tell me why. There may be some people running for president as Republicans who don't want this. I would be astonished that anybody seeking to be commander in chief wouldn't want this power. It would allow the administration to fight the terror group ISIS wherever, whenever, and however. As if the real threat of ISIS was a mystery to the American people. Most Americans are fully aware that our greatest threat lies in Obama's policies regarding immigration. The bill isn't even warm yet, and Vice President Joe Biden is in Turkey cheerleading World War III, presenting both sides of the issue to Turkey and the American people. Our allies in the region were our largest problem in Syria. The Turks were great friends, and I have a great relationship with Erdogan, which I've just spent a lot of time with. They poured hundreds of millions of dollars and tens, thousands of tons of weapons into anyone who would fight against Assad. Except that the people who were being, who were being supplied were al-Nusra and al-Qaeda and the extremist elements of jihadis coming from other parts of the world. Following World War II, the United States leadership has continually sought to foment and drive the industrial military complex machine into an unending unconstitutional state of global war, creating the very enemies Obama's dictatorial powers would seek to suppress. We have finally reached the precipice of the total annihilation of the balance of powers that act as the foundation of our republic. Let's not get involved in constitutional arguments. President Obama is desperately attempting to disarm the public and re-engineer the United States into a lawless military state overseen by corrupt politicians on par with the horror south of our border. Ladies and gentlemen, we are broadcasting worldwide on this Thursday, the 28th day of January, 
2016, really hard to believe that the first month of 2016 is almost bye-bye. Wow. Total information overload again. I pledge today to go over all this news. I will cover all 200-plus articles. I will get to all five guests. I will, I will, I will, or die trying. We have Harry Dent, who's predicted exactly what's happening with the economy with the last few years with stunning precision, popping in for 30 minutes. David Knight and Joe Biggs from Oregon, where we've got one dead, another was grazed, and now Eamon Bundy has told the folks inside the wildlife refuge, please come out, please, you know, give up. And they're saying that they may not charge you. Uh, there's a seven-mile perimeter around it, uh, and our crew is approaching that perimeter right now. They got in last night. They've now been driving out of the rural area um, from Portland since they got in last night, Joe Biggs, and, of course, David Knight. Former Congressman Ron Paul is coming on about the huge uh, developments with the unprecedented authorization for military force that is a complete rewrite of the War Powers Act, transferring power from Congress to the presidency for 360 total war with boots on the ground anywhere in the world. No one has ever had a declaration like this, not even Julius Caesar or Adolf Hitler. It is wild. And folks go, well, it probably won't pass. It's was written by the leader of the Senate and is sailing through right now. It's just incredible. It doesn't mean actual martial law is coming. They're just putting it on paper to do it whenever they want. It's crazy. By the way, the Pentagon just announced uh, yesterday, last night, we're staying in Afghanistan another decade. They promised eight years ago they'd be out within two years. Then they promised another year. I mean, now they just say, no, we're not leaving. Oh, and by the way, we're going back into Iraq, and there's not even discussion of it because that's where all this is going as the nation goes bankrupt. And then Richard Reeves from Iowa, uh, we got contacted by the Trump folks. They're so nice and said, hey, we're doing this wounded warrior thing last night, and uh, we're, you know, we were serious about trying to raise them millions of dollars when Trump first said, hey, if I go on Fox or CNN, you guys ought to donate the extra money, because they admit instead of making $5, $10 million on a debate, they might make $20 million. Instead of $100,000 a minute, they get upwards of a $1 million a minute. Fox is selling it for $700 plus thousand a minute until Trump dropped out. Now it's gone down to like $150,000, despite all the nationwide hype. And so he says, I don't want any money. I want it to go to veterans. And the media lies and says, that dirty, greedy scoundrel, remember this a few months ago? He just wants the money for himself. He wants it until we played the full video here and others did. That's how they deceive. And so he's brought that up. He said, I don't like Megyn Kelly. She's disingenuous. She makes stuff up. They want to set me up and have everybody attack me in a rigged deal. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to run a feed and we're going to raise money, forget advertising, directly for the veterans. And he's saying, CNN, you can carry it, but you better give money to the wounded warriors. <laughs> And the media is calling it despicable. Talked to Mr. Stone this morning, one of the main advisors to Trump. And he is going to be on Fox News with Megyn Kelly tonight. He's in New York. We're working on, and we'll probably be able to get him on today uh, during the fourth hour of Anthony Gucciardi uh, popping in and on the our live coverage that starts from 7 o'clock and runs past 10 o'clock tonight. I will be here this evening. David Knight normally is the central anchor with Jakari and Leanne and, of course, uh, McBreen. So the reporters can run back and forth and track things as they unfold. Uh, but because Knight is going to be in Oregon, he'll also be on with us tonight. Uh, we are going to uh, be, of course, covering it live from here in Austin, Texas with Richard Reeves in Iowa with our own feed, uh, with the Trump folks inviting uh, Richard over to run our own InfoWars feed out of there, knowing CNN will probably try to come over and stop us or something. But notice CNN says they're going to be taking Trump's feed and then commenting on it. Oh, what we do, taking CNN and Fox's feed and MSNBC's feed and commenting on it. See, we do our own feed and then they comment on us. This is what you talk about when you deal with the fall of the mainstream media. Because now... The debates aren't about them. It isn't about who they knight, who they king make, who they say the leader is. It's about who the people tune into and what the people think. So it's the democratization of the media. I'm a Republican, not Republican Party, Republican uh, when it comes to the congressional system, our federalist system, 
our Americana system. We're a republic, not a democracy. But it is a representative, small d democracy in that there is democratization through the filter of separation of power, state and federal government, three levels of government per state and federal for a separation of power system to try to stop centralized dictatorships from being formed. Well, it's the same thing with the media. We're now seeing the democratization of it because the mainstream media stopped doing its job, got so openly deceptive, so openly arrogant, so openly imperialist, that the people have now turned against them big time. Obviously, I didn't cover the Megyn Kelly uh, situation much the last few days. We talked about it some here, but maybe 5% of our coverage. Today, I'll be talking maybe 20% about it because it is really important through the lens of Fox and through the lens of what Trump's doing, you see the disintegration uh, of the mainstream media stranglehold. So it's very, very informative uh, to look at what's happening and to look at technological developments that we have now to be able to challenge the dinosaur media, even if they have 50 times, 100 times the funding that we have. I can just turn on an iPhone, shoot a video live to YouTube or Facebook, and the average video gets around a million views. 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday, 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. Dominating, dominating, dominating. You know how much it freaks out Fox News and CNN that they've got to spend massive amounts of money in advertising and propaganda and decades of investment and talking heads and, and screenwriters and teleprompters and just, you know, 400, 500 million dollar a year budgets and they can't get but 200,000 viewers on the average MSNBC show. CNN's about the same. Fox top shows, 3 million, 4 million. Lower level shows, a million. They're declining as well. But they still have big audiences when it comes to a debate. And to see Trump say, you know what? I'm going to do my own thing. And I bet you, if you add up the YouTube, the live streams, the Ustreams, streams, Trump's own feeds, CNN picking it up, everyone else covering what's happening, that people aren't going to be able to stand it. They're not going to watch the Fox debate. I predict it's going to have less viewers than the Donald Trump coverage if you add together the different feeds, our feed, CNN, his feed, the Wounded Warrior program, and others. This is beautiful. And we'll be here at Infowars.com tonight, 7 o'clock and on, breaking every stinking facet of this town. We'll be analyzing CNN. We'll be analyzing Fox. We'll be, because you know CNN's going to be cutting in with comments and stuff and, 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 and you know, trying to hijack it. And we're going to be here hijacking them, breaking down exactly what they're doing with commentary and live analysis with the Young Turks and with Glenn Beck and everybody else following suit now copying what we do, covering the debates, the State of the Unions, and others with analysis because that's what it's all about, documenting what the traitor media is doing. But what a stroke of genius by Donald Trump to come on this show and thumb it in their faces, hoping they'd attack him for coming on the show. They did it for one day and then zero coverage because it blew up in their face again. I mean, you don't think Trump didn't know that was what was happening? And then, of course, Trump leaving the debate, knowing he'd be demonized more. You didn't think he knew what he was doing, but they're so arrogant. They still haven't figured out the only way to discredit Alex Jones or Matt Drudge or Joseph Farah uh, or Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin. I mean, anybody they hate. I'm not saying we're all good, bad, or perfect or whatever. The only way they could defeat Rush Limbaugh would be to embrace him and endorse him. Like when Rand Paul started getting embraced by the establishment, he went from number one six months ago to now like number eight. And I told him off record and I told Politico on record when he got elected to the Kentucky Senate, to the federal Senate out of Kentucky, I said, the only thing you got to worry about is you're such a gentleman. I know you won't sell us out. I know you're not going to compromise in deeds. But I said, do not compromise in rhetoric. And Rand Paul has done that. He's come out and said that uh, good riddance to Donald Trump. That's like, you know, declaring that uh, Mark Twain was dead 20 years before he died. He said, rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. 
This is something people do. I see it a lot in media and culture. They announce someone's over. They announce someone's bankrupt. They announce someone's defeated when they're not. And that used to work when the mainstream media had control. They don't anymore. They're constantly announcing that we're done. They're constantly announcing drudge as a has-been every day when his numbers just go up and up and up. This is what they engage in. This is how they operate. It's like when the creator of the X-Files came out, Chris Carter, and said it's based mainly on Alex Jones and InfoWars work, the new season. The, the trolls came out and said, Jones is crazy. Even in some news articles, he's claiming it's based on him. I mean, I knew Chris Carter was a listener 10 years ago and one of the stars of his show came and visited me at my house. But I didn't even say it really on air then because it just sounded pompous. You know, I mean, I know we've been affecting culture since I started out 21 years ago. But it, it isn't about the fact, oh, I affected culture, aren't I big? It's that we are dominating and taking the media power away from these people like they're Grendel, we're Beowulf, they're trying to get out the door and we got them by the arm, we're pulling it out of the socket. I feel it coming out right now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Jones, your host. We have a raft of guests joining us today, obviously. We'll be back tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Here's how you listen or watch. Many of our radio affiliates, I never thought of this, are now picking up the nightly news every night at 7 o'clock and then running their ads, obviously, over our ads. That's fine. Um, we just need to kind of create a contract on that so folks know where we stand, but... Quite frankly, I don't even care. I mean, I'd say nightly news, go ahead and, uh, you know, carry it and run ads over every uh, block of ads we've got. Uh, the contract we've got for TV and VHF, UHF, and cable stations is we get like 20% of the ads, and it's not very ad heavy, but we want the money to go to the local affiliates because we know, you know, how, how bad the economy is. We just want to get the word out. And then we sprinkle, obviously, some advertising into the show to be able to finance ourselves. Uh, but... Infowars.com forward slash show. We'll have the, the feed that we produce here that is a feed of CNN, a feed from Trump, a feed of our reporters on the ground, uh, a feed of our reporters in Iowa, our reporters in Oregon for the ongoing standoff, just all mixed together. That's the super feed, the nightly news debate coverage feed. And then you'll have the feed from this four-hour show that a lot of people want to watch that's restreaming when it ends today at 3 o'clock. That'll be a separate feed of the day show. And then another YouTube backup feed where we run our nightly news feed over YouTube in live time. And that's more important than ever. I hope folks start using it because uh, the bandwidth charges, when you get 16 million people in a month tuning into just w one of our video feeds, that's been a small part of our audience, that feed, but it's just growing and growing. Where 16 million times people log in and watch it. They watch like 20-something minutes on average a piece. Just the bandwidth costs are incredible. So uh, we obviously uh, would love to do a Facebook mentions and send out a three-hour show, four-hour show, but they're, in their contract, it says you basically can't do that. YouTube lets us do it, so we're going to email out that feed too, InfoWars Live Republican Debate Coverage. We need, probably need to add in the headline, copy this link and share it. Because folks send us constant emails What's this feed? I don't see the debate yet. The general public out there literally doesn't think, well, it's a link to the live show. It needs to be save this live link for the debate and coverage. And then we're going to email that out uh, to everybody uh, in multiple emails today uh, for folks that are signed up for the free newsletter at Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. You can obviously go to Infowars.com forward slash show and find the free links to all of the different feeds and also the free video cast, the podcast, all of it for the daytime show. If you're a subscriber generally of the nightly news at prisonplanet.tv, then you get that uh, when it's on every night, but it, it's always free during special events like the debates. And of course the daytime radio slash TV show that you're watching and listening to right now is obviously free as well. 24 uh, seven, not just when it's live uh, six days a week when we put out shows at infowars.com forward slash show. And I spent some time on that today because we get so many emails, so many comments. How do I find it? Uh, last debate a few weeks ago, I was at home doing it via video Skype into the studio. And I got five text messages from friends within 30 seconds of 7 o'clock coming around because they were looking around for the feed of the live nightly news. 
and, and they were finding the feed of this show that was already over. And so these are smart friends and family. They just didn't know to go click the top link and, and you know, find the sub feed right there. So it, it's all about making it easy for people, making it easy for folks to find it, labeling the names right, making it clear to people. And it's up to you if you want to further help devastate mainstream media, further help rip their arms out of their sockets. Uh, we've had debate coverage before and election coverage before that had 3 million viewers just on YouTube and our stream in 24 hours. Now, again, we have three, four, five million people a day on terrestrial radio, internet feeds, video, the rest of it, but that's taken us years to build up that, that audience every day. To be able to just a few times a year have a live feed and have three million people tune in is CNN level and beyond. It's approaching Fox News, and that's why they pay attention. And, and so it shows how the patriots, folks exposing Bilderberg Group, the vaccines, the Zika virus, uh, other population control operations, uh, electronic hacking of elections, all of it, we're here, hardcore, for real, getting into the top contending heavyweight championship big leagues. I mean, we're getting to the point where we're going, we're on the field with Goliath. We're getting to the point where we're going to take Goliath politically out, folks. Goliath is scared. He's already bloody. We just got to chop his head off. He's already on the ground. We're just in amazement that he's been knocked out. We got to finish the deed before he gets back up. We got to go in there and just fully discredit these people, savage them with the truth, and hit them where it hurts. And that's in the ratings. And take their listeners and viewers. And we do that by you emailing and posting on Facebook and Twitter our free feeds and taking everybody over to InfoWars. It'll be a savage death blow to the enemy. So crush their skulls. Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central, we're here live. Ron Paul's coming up on election 2016. On the martial law powers, the Republicans are openly trying to hand Obama and more. One of the biggest stories here is one that's been hiding in plain view for a long time. But it's unprecedented this time. MSNBC headline, top linked on DrudgeReport.com, Sanders camp suspicious of Microsoft's influence in Iowa caucuses. Kurt Nemo has a more detailed article at InfoWars.com, in my view, that actually goes into the background of this because Microsoft is at the top of the pyramid of shadow government. I'm going to give you the rest of the story here in a moment. But Sanders camp suspicious of Microsoft influence in Iowa caucuses. Here's the InfoWars headline. Sanders campaign worried Microsoft app will misrepresent Iowa caucus vote. Uh, yeah, will hack the vote is the real headline. In fact, I would tweet that out in my name, folks, uh, crew in there. Um, it's hard to tweet and, uh, while you talk on air, so they, they just take the transcripts constantly. Uh, I would shoot this out and just basically say Sanders is worried about Microsoft hacking Iowa caucuses. I mean, that's what it is. When you cheat something, it's a hack. People think it's always breaking in. No, it's, it's also engaging in a fraud using computers, period. And... Microsoft is probably one of the most evil companies in history after IBM. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And absolutely, that's why you see such weird results in Iowa, famously, is there's been so much uh, black box manipulation. They've caught hackers getting in. I mean, they caught Diebold. It's admitted that JFK stole Chicago, Illinois, to win the presidency in 1961. It's known that LBJ stole his first congressional seat in Texas. That was the stuff in the ballot box. It's, it's well established there's a lot of hanky-panky. But it, it's still kind of geographical because if there's a huge landslide for a candidate, and I've had many of the top experts on, it's hard for them to still steal it. But if it's close, they can steal them and not get caught with the manipulation. So we'll break that down in a moment. Uh, every day I get four or five new videos, as I mentioned, that we don't even get to now, uh, uh, of just migrants attack Residents throw bricks, beat them. Uh, they just, France is collapsing. Even mainstream news there admits that their roads are now collapsing with the illegals running around raping and robbing and carjacking everything. And the French just roll over. If they fight back, they get arrested. Uh, this is like some weird socialist French revolution, part two, part deux, using Islamics. I mean, it's, it's crazy. 
So we're going to be going over uh, all of that. The latest on the Bundys. Eamon Bundy admits defeat, calls on remaining Oregon occupiers to stand down and go home. And sure enough, the so-called militia guys that were his security haven't been arrested, got let go, and were the folks that would run up to us and say, get out of here, you say the Bundys are feds. And we would go, Joe Biggs would go, we didn't say you were feds. We said, watch out for federal infiltrators. They always do it, and they'll come in and tell everybody that Alex says that they're feds, so they don't talk to us, so we can't try to protect them. And they were successful. They did that. They speak to ego. The feds show up and go, sir, I'm here to protect you. You are the new George Washington. I'm going to be your right-hand man. And then it comes out that they're informants or they're connected to the government or they've been threatened to do it. And I'm not saying who's who or who's what or naming names. I'm just saying a couple folks got the word that day and disappeared. Other people got picked up and then released. And, and I mean, look, at infiltrations, they'll do fake arrest. They'll do fake indictments. Uh... They've even done fake executions before and released people. That's been admitted. So folks that don't know what the government, especially the U.S. government, does to infiltrate, quote, organized crime uh, or paramilitary groups or narcotics groups, you just don't ever read the newspaper then. Um, and, and the weird thing is they'll use the same operatives over and over again burning people, and they've got a playbook where they go up and speak to the ego of the people that mean well, and then get full control of them and then say, I'm now in charge of all media, you know, going through this group. And then it's over. It's over. You are controlled from the beginning. And I've seen them do it with all these Muslim groups and, 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 and radical leftist groups too, where they'll get in, take them over, and then lead them into crimes or lead them right into, right into ambushes. And I've never seen anything like it. And as soon as the people are all locked up and going to prison, I get letters going, I'm sorry you were right. I wish you would have, I wish I would have listened. <laughs> I'm really sad for you. The feds are going to have major meetings on this. They're going to have all their hidden footage. They're going to teach classes on it to send out whole groups of people on how to do this over and over again. This is a big victory for the globalist. And it's very, very sad. But hopefully we can learn from this. And listen, I would try to go cover urban warfare drills. And Mike Hansen and others are witnesses to this. Everybody knows I'm peaceful. I wasn't in camo. I wasn't planning violence. I just wanted to videotape gun confiscation drills and other things that sources inside the military and police told me about. Like the chief of police of San Antonio on tape telling, warning me and, you know, glad the media was covering it. They tried to bribe him with a quarter million dollars to shut up. So was, that was under Clinton, was trying to see if he could get local governments ready for nationwide martial law and gun confiscation. And Thomas Sanchez, a Vietnam vet, head of emergency management in Kingsville, had him on. He warned me. Then the chief of police San Antonio called and said, come down here. I'm glad you'll cover it. The media won't. They tried to give me a quarter million dollars last month. Then it was in the AP after he was on with me. And, man, then the death threat started and military guys in parking lots you know, threatening me, and I got I got physically attacked, uh, I got robbed, I got broken into, and then years later, I'd be out in Florida covering an urban warfare drill, and we got video of this in my film, Police State 2, The Takeover, people going, I'm not talking to you in the neighborhood, looks like Mayberry, the Army says you're crazy and dangerous, and then I'm just up there by the airfield, by City Park videotaping, and a known Fed, who'd been here in Austin, Special Forces guy, jumps out and says, Alex, let's start fires and starts lighting fires. I had to physically stop him with Mike Hansen. And then the guy got up in the fighting position, and I said, look, you think you can take me? We're both taking you. You're not going to set a fire and stop us. So I got ready to fight him, and then he ran off into the night. I mean, I've had special ops guys. They're ready to fight me because they're going to set a fire and blame me. Now, you people better listen to me. I've been through this. When they come out of the bushes and start lighting grass on fire, going, I'm glad you agree with me. We're going to burn this down. They would have put me in prison for arson. And I warn the Bundys, I warn them all, and they go, we got cowboy hats. Ugh. We're, you know, we know everything. I'm like, <laughs> with Gollum-like feds sitting right beside them, giggling and looking at me with hatred. And I'm not trying to go off on them. I'm mad they got set up. I'm, I'm just sick of it. And I'm sick of the government we've got that knows I'm nonviolent with the First Amendment and you've tried to put me in prison repeatedly with fake gun buys and setting fires and, and, and everything else.
But you know, don't you, that when you guys came and thought you were going to beat me into a pulp in that parking lot, you found out who really tough, didn't you, tough guys? Just because you've been running around killing a bunch of Arabs for 20 years doesn't mean when you actually go up against Americans that you can trump justice. You can't do it. And most of the military is awake, and they're good people. Compared to the general public, they're more awake. I'm just telling everybody, I've been through this for 21 years. And you better listen to me. <sighs> Excuse me. I, I, I've got to get back into the news. I, I'm, I've got tons of important news. We got the guys popping in for like 15 minutes from there. We're covering it. We hope it de-escalates with the ongoing standoff at the federal group of buildings, uh, ref, wild refuge. It's just, man. Getting angry. Hold on a second. I got to settle down for a minute. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna get into the whole hack thing with Sanders. I'm gonna get into the latest with Trump. His genius moves. The Zika virus. Uh, the author of the U.S. U.N. Biological Weapons Treaty is gonna be coming on tomorrow. Francis Boyle, professor. Look, th this could be a government bioweapon system. Of course, it ends up basically reducing fertility and attacks babies in utero. Uh, we're gonna be looking at that. We've got a ton of clips we're getting into today. Huge economy developments. <sighs> But first off, I want to talk about something really, really exciting. We've set out to come out with the very best nutraceuticals there are, period. And we've discounted our flagship top nutraceutical product, some of the compounds in it, our prescription in Europe and other areas, and that's DNA Force. Already three to four times less than the nutraceuticals uh, products of similar, similar design and, uh, that, that, that medical offices sell. Now, this is not prescription, but many similar compounds are sold as prescription because people don't understand why it costs more than regular vitamins and things. So as they sell it as prescription, people then basically go along with it. We're just giving you something that's normally prescription that we can legally give you uh, for, we're talking three, four times less uh, than what doctors will sell it to you, and ours is better. DNA Force, 25% off for a limited time. Get our flagship nutraceutical DNA Force for 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. All supplies last. This is our most advanced product in the InfoWars Life line. We did extensive research to design this formulation for maximum impact and includes patented ingredients that are lab quality. These ingredients are very difficult to source. That's why we sell out of it many times because then we got to haggle and stuff. We don't want to pay 14,000 a kilo. How about 12,000 a kilo just for the bio PQQ? And it's in DNA Force, loaded with a patented bio-PQQ compound, which is backed by 175 clinical studies by major respected researchers. The amazing compound is known to influence nerve growth and regeneration. It's also known to support the powerhouse of the cell mitochondria that are the source of energy for our bodies. CoQ10, I'm not going to go over that. People know what that does. It's the highest quality type. Uh, and there are nine other ingredients in DNA Force, digestive enzymes for uptake, transreservatol, and many others that work in concert to promote better health, more energy, and even regrow damage in atrophied nerves. And I told you I cut my finger off. I said 10 years ago, time flies, like 15 years ago, with Kevin Booth out water skiing, fell off a barge trying to help people that were out there, had a fire on their pontoon boat. And we went over, helped them put it out and everything. And then I was climbing back on and fell off, and my hand got caught and cut it off. It was flopping around by a little piece of skin. So I only had nerve feeling right where that little piece of skin was still attached because it was cut through flopping around and I didn't have feeling until I took DNA force my dad's like this is the ultimate compound it regrows nerves oh my gosh it'll help people that have damaged stuff but and we can only say what's in the studies but it says even more that oh it's so incredible telomeres DNA mitochondria and I'm like okay yeah I see the literature great yes you're right wow you know no one else has this but you know doctors are selling something similar oh we can undercut the market and then I start taking it and I start getting tingling in my back right injuries in my leg or at a compound fracture and then within three months I was like, wait a minute, my finger has feeling again. I mean, it's the real deal, folks. Uh, so InfoWarsLife.com, we got a bunch of other specials running right now, 50% off on orders above $50. You get free shipping, actually. No, no teleprompters here, folks. I get overwhelmed. We have free shipping on orders above $50, 25% off DNA Force, and so much more at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And, and again, I get wound up when I start going back to remembering all the stuff that went on when I was actually out on the ground reporting on things that nobody knew about. I mean, Soldier of Fortune, right around that time in like 96, 
and, and, and obviously Patriots over at that publication, had an article about a Delta Force helicopter and a drill crashing in Houston and, and then how the news said Soldier of Fortune was lying about it. It didn't exist. And they had people that had been in Delta Force write other articles about it. No, indeed, this is going on. So they'd go on air and say there's no such thing as black helicopters. Well, I was sick of people saying I was lying about it, so I went out and caught black helicopters running operations and who they were many times. Once in San Antonio, even after the police chief had thrown them out, we were videotaping the aftermath of a drill, and they just had a guy get out an MP with a gun, walk over, pull his gun out and say, give me your video camera. I said, give it to him, Mike. Mike said, no, First Amendment. Takes the gun, sticks it to Mike's chest, takes it away, takes the tape, drives off, says, stay here. I go, no, let's see what they do. Comes back with the erased tape 20 months later. I mean, that's the type of stuff we've had to deal with, folks. And, and can you just imagine all the other things that are going on, all the other things that are happening? I mean, let me tell you, you'll realize how evil this government is and what they'll do when you're in the woods trying to cover a military drill at a park next to an airfield, and they try to burn stuff down and blame it on you. We're not in Kansas anymore. And people need to stop being so incredibly naive. People need to stop being so mindless and admit how much trouble we're in. And speaking of that, let's shift gears to this. Sanders' campaign worried Microsoft to Apple misrepresent Iowa caucus votes. You got an app for both parties now run, quote, for the first time that'll tell everybody what's happening. And so Sanders is smart with his little commie friends. Because let me tell you, we've seen polls out there where he gets double or triple what Hillary does. I mean, I don't believe this stuff that he's neck and neck with her. He's way ahead of her. I mean, I know who the constituents are, a bunch of something-for-nothing people who like her because they thought she was a communist. Now she, they know she's filthy rich. Sanders has been attacking all that, and she's an insider, so she's losing her support. Of course, if you give a corporation like Microsoft the control over something, they're going to do it. They've gotten away with everything. Microsoft is a spinoff to get around antitrust laws of IBM. IBM literally created Hitler, ran the machines with the with the numbers on people, the Hollerith machines, just Google IBM and the Holocaust. And Thomas Watson, it's the Watson computer. Well, Watson's the big deep blue. It's the Thomas computer, named his first name, that decides who to kill at the VA and not give treatment to. It's the Thomas computer that's going to decide now if you're on Social Security whether or not your guns should be taken. I mean, and they just run basically everything. And, and Microsoft is their front company and involved in eugenics and secret vaccine programs and vaccines in food and covert operations and weather control. Just everything I say, Google it. It's the foremost black op cutout front group. And he's absolutely right uh, that that's going on. On Wednesday, the Bernie Sanders campaign said it was concerned software giant Microsoft will tamper with caucuses' election vote tallies in Iowa next week. And that's why they're setting up their own parallel system to track it. Absolutely. You, and, and you always catch these groups cheating, but it's like, well, this tally didn't match up. And by then, the mainstream media has moved on to the next lie. Well, now there's alternative media that's bigger than mainstream media in many cases, so they can't just do this in the dark. Microsoft is partnered with both establishment parties and will provide a mobile embedded cloud-based platform that will facilitate accuracy and efficiency of the reporting process according to their website. You have to ask yourself why they'd want to give something like that away for free, said Pete D. Alessandro, who is heading up the Sanders campaign in Iowa. Both the Sanders and Clinton campaigns have built reporting systems based on Microsoft app, in addition to taking money in the past from Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan's, and George Soros, and it just goes on to Clinton's pedigree. Absolutely. Do the Clintons rig elections? Do big old brown bears go poo-poo in the woods? Huh? That's like saying to Santa Claus, wear a red and white elf outfit with black boots. We'll be right back. We are back. And I'm really glad that Drudge Report is linked to this MSNBC article because a lot of other media isn't really covering it. And I don't normally even go with MSNBC, but they love their little commie Sanders. And it, it, it is bold for Sanders to call out the elephant in the room because election fraud is really a big problem. And if you don't think Hillary isn't going to use that in Iowa, and if folks don't know that Microsoft is as crooked as a dog's back leg, then you need to get educated. I'm talking to new listeners out there.
Here's the MSNBC article. Sanders camp suspicious of Microsoft's influence in Iowa caucuses. And more and more, we see the election fraud. I personally, many years ago, when Pat Buchanan was running, went down and volunteered at the election center in the old convention center they tore down in Austin. And I was there stacking up the ballots in the so-called, you know, Democrat town of Austin, but it was the Republican primary. And I mean, like 60, 70% were for Pat Buchanan. There were Pat Buchanan signs everywhere. He was kind of the proto Donald Trump dark horse that folks wanted. They didn't want, uh, who was it then, Bob Dole? And it came out on the news that night, you know, oh, we've crossed over 60% of the tallies and it's clear Pat Buchanan, I think it was like 9% or something. And then the establishment candidate was the vast majority. And I walked around and talked to people in there and I said, are your stacks the same as mine of different precincts? Almost all Pat Buchanan, they go, yeah, it's Pat Buchanan's winning. Then we take the stacks of Scantrons and stick them in a big machine. And they have little data tapes. And then somewhere in the data tapes, well, everybody knows what happens. And then I even went and challenged the election results. The state board heard it. It was on the county commissioner's TV, you name it, on cable. And I got up and yelled at them and, you know, after they came back a week later and said, the state board looked at it and agrees there are anomalies and problems, but we are certifying this. They certify it. So I yelled at them and said, this is all tyranny. So then they had the SWAT team that was in the building next door. The next week when I was there, come and sit on both sides of me. I want to find that footage. It was pretty funny. Anyways, and then uh, they're like, Alex, there's no election fraud. I go, oh, yeah. So they go, here, come on over to our office. So I go over there, there's like Oklahoma cities and inside job videos on the wall and all the rest of it. And I went back and met with the head of the SWAT team named Lieutenant Beck, and he goes, Alex, there's no Delta Force coming. There's no black helicopters. I was a Marine in Vietnam, and, and, and I'm, you know, on the intelligence group of the state as well. And I'm telling you, and then about, like I said, six months later, he calls me and goes, I gave him my number. He goes, come on by the office i want to show you something he goes delta force was here and they did what you said they do and i said what was that and he goes what you said they do which is try to buy them off and he goes what's going on and then they heard about that and fired him <laughs> they used some political correctness thing to get rid of him last time i heard he was working at the airport but 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 that's how america operates they just go there are no black helicopters there's no election fraud obama's not a radical muslim there's no isis coming into the country they talk to you like you're five years old, but it doesn't work like that anymore. And so it's going to come down to people that know they're on the side of bad working for the system and those of us that know that the system's been taken over by very, 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 very criminal interests. But the big news is Trump is helping put the final nails in the coffin of the dinosaur rotting media, helping shovel them into their grave. As he says, I'm not coming to your stage debate. I'm doing my own thing where I'll dominate, and I'm going to have more viewers than you do, and then I'm going to give the money to the veterans group, the Wounded Warriors. We salute Donald Trump, another stroke of pure leadership, outsmarting the Bilderberg trash. Pray for Donald Trump. I can tell you that right now, folks. They got everybody coming out against him. Stay with us. No matter how bad stuff gets, no matter how good people get persecuted, it's all part of God's plan. So when good people have got to go through a lot of bad things, it's so a lot of innocent people can have a future. And I'm not going to sit here and spit on all the things and disrespect all the things that our amazing forebears, I don't care where you come from or what you do, everybody has gone through adversity. Every human family, going back to the mist of time, has had incredible struggles. And we have to become noble again. Or we will fall and be nothing more than murderous, demonous, piratical savages. Now, we've got a bunch of guests just popping in today, interspersed with video clips and news ahead of our big coverage tonight. An analysis from 7 o'clock right past 10 o'clock central at Infowars.com forward slash show. Harry Dent on the economy, new developments all the time, popping in for just basically one segment. 
then David Knight and Joe Biggs popping in from Oregon on the developments with that standoff and the death and the rest of it. Then former Congressman Ron Paul on the martial law provisions. They're trying to ram through Congress. Yes, you heard me right. No one else is covering it. Uh, Richard Reeves from Iowa, Anthony Gucciardi, and more. We're working on Roger Stone in the Trump campaign and more. Uh, the Trump campaign reached out to us and said, yeah, come on in to the big Trump event tonight uh, and live feed and, and, and cover it directly from here. And so we'll have our own feed, CNN's feed from the Trump event. We'll be an analyzing the Fox feed. All tonight, Fuse, you'll get everything. It's, you know, it's like having two football games on at once, you know, or three of them. All right there on the big board with live analysis and breakdown uh, as it unfolds, 7 o'clock Central. And again, the revolution is about you taking action and about letting people know about that feed. That's just one example of the genius of what Trump's doing. You know, you go back a few months ago to that CNBC debate when they demonized and attacked the candidates and did the old school deal of making the media God, the media, the kingmakers, and everyone just laughed at them, disdained them, said, look what you're doing from, from Donald Trump to Ted Cruz. They did great jobs. Rand Paul, did, I thought, pretty much won that debate, did a great job, and just tore up the media. Absolutely devastated them. And now Trump's not going to be there for Megyn Kelly to perch there, you know, a swimsuit model on TV uh, and read off a teleprompter and attack him. He's going and, and, and just saying, hey, we don't need you. We'll have our own system. And so now CNN's going to carry it. And, and, and Trump would have dominated them even if he didn't because everything he said at that would have then been played more because he's the guy who isn't part of the party. He's the guy that said, no, I'm not going to play by your rules. Coming up, ISIS to take Rome by 2020. That's an incredible report. Obama usurps U.S. war powers. That's Ron Paul. Uh, we're going to get to police on the Oregon occupation. Militia member warned uh, and, and wanted peaceful protests. That's Lavoy. But then some people said that, you know, he said we're only going to have a revolution in this country in the book he wrote. He's the guy that got killed. Very, very sad. Um, we'll play the Trump clips. He refuses to debate. Slights Kelly. Uh, and Rand Paul says maybe Trump will show up in a Democratic debate. He's also said good riddance. Uh, you know, it's not good riddance because you're acting like he was sent to the phantom zone with uh, General Zod. He's going to be right there dominating and controlling the whole thing, putting out his narrative while raising money for veterans. That's like if the... Uh, say Broncos win the Super Bowl or the other team, saying, saying that they're not football players. I mean, it's just delusional. And that doesn't work anymore. Yes, in the past, CNN could say, no one wants your guns. There's no covert military operations in America. You know, you didn't build your business. Two plus two equals five. That worked in the past because there was no one there to call it. People were in Stockholm Syndrome and just couldn't believe it was happening. They were gaslighted. It doesn't work. The trance is lifting. That's right, occupied by the collectivist socialist bureaucrats and the crony capitalists coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas, Austin, broadcasting worldwide. Coming up at 7 o'clock tonight in just seven hours, we're going to have live coverage of the Donald Trump event with our reporters there with a live feed the Trump folks have given us, uh, treating us really good. And then we've got uh, live coverage of CNN's analysis uh, over there uh, of Trump, and we're also going to be covering Fox uh, and uh, their debate with the establishment Republican candidates uh, other than Ted Cruz. I like Ted Cruz. I like Rand Paul. I, I, I wish that Rand Paul wasn't bad-mouthing Trump. Trump's really smart to be going over there and doing this. He'll get more coverage. He'll, he'll get more views, and he'll dominate uh, the narrative. And, of course, Fox is saying, oh, he's destroyed himself. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, amazing. Now, joining us is the Bain Turnaround expert, formerly, and best-selling author uh, here on the broadcast, Harry Dent of HarryDent.com. And he, of course, uh, has the book, uh, The Demographic Cliff, that's so important, he's offering it to you the cost of shipping. Uh, he's not an advertiser, I'm just telling you, $4.95, that doesn't even pay for what the book cost him, so, so that he can warn you of what's happening. And uh, he's predicted pretty much with total precision exactly what would happen the last year. Uh, and this went back several years, but he comes on every few weeks and just tells us the next shoe to drop. So there's no need to even have him on for an hour. He's having him on for like 12 minutes because he's a busy guy as well. He can just tell us what he thinks is coming next. HarryDent.com.
dentresearch.com, uh, founder of uh, Dent Research, economic forecasting firm, uh, MBA from Harvard, and I'm not going to go through the rest of his, uh, rest of his uh, CEO jobs and things. But, Mr. Dent, obviously you were on two weeks ago. Since then, it's, it's, it's what you said is happening. You said, you know, stock market going down the next week. Uh, continuing and might, might pop back up again, but then back down after that. You talked about all the technicals. Uh, so update us uh, on what you predicted, what's now happened, and what you say is coming next. Well, you know, I tell you, just to run through a, a few quick slides, because it's important. In the short term, you have to get a little technical. Long term is very simple. Baby boom spends and then doesn't spend. You know, internet moves mainstream, then it peaks out as it has. So we've seen the best trends behind us, which we predicted 20 years ago, not just recently. But in the near term, I am seeing signs. Number one, our first chart shows that every bubble we've had since the late 90s has gone higher and every crash has gone lower. And, and the big difference is that the last crash into early 2009, this final bubble was totally generated by printing money. Just, just free money. Um, uh, companies buying back their stocks, you know, engineering their earnings, everything's fake. And, and, and so this bubble is the most dangerous to me. It, it's it almost Well, you've been saying that for years. You're, I mean, you're right. And you said Microsoft, uh, you said Apple would peak in the next few years. Apple now admits they've peaked, that now they're talking about demographics. Suddenly a lot of folks are sounding like you, but because they were able to artificially keep it going a few years longer than they should have, and now at Davos, they admit they're, quote, out of bullets, what does that signify? Well, well they are. And, and again, the biggest thing I get, Alex, every every media show I get on, somebody comes in against me and says, oh, Harry, this is not a bubble because of this. I'm like, no, I lay over this bubble chart with every other bubble chart in history, including the late 94 to early 2000 bubble, which anybody would agree with the bubble. And it lays over almost perfectly, except this bubble's gone an extra year because of the stimulus, which makes it more dangerous. So, you know, the, this first chart shows that after each bubble has gone higher, the next crash, which is likely to happen in the next year, year and a half or so, is likely to take us down 70% from the top in, in last May to like 5,500 to 6,000 in the Dow. Now, but there's a series of how this happens, and this is where it gets more short-term. The next chart shows how we had this bubble channel. I mean, stocks just went straight up from late 2011 into 2015 in a narrow channel with almost no substantial corrections. And then that's, terribly dangerous when that happens. And finally, in August of last year, we broke down below that. I, I was warning our newsletter subscribers, man, if we break below this channel, then you got to start thinking this thing is over. The next chart, very simple again, shows for the first time uh, compared to most bubbles, because this has been artificial and stretched so long, we ha we're having a rounded top here. You know, it's not like it just gets crazier and crazier and then finally blows like China just did or we did in 1929. Or in and you said on the show three years ago you thought it would start with China blowing. You, you predicted yep. it exactly. Yes. I mean, and, and that's you said out of the, all of the triggers, China was the most likely. China and oil, which has also been another big trigger. Uh, and I tell you, next going to be Germany and Europe because Germany's got the worst demographics of any country we've seen since Japan in the early 90s, and we were the only people that predicted Japan would go down. So, but we're having this rounded top because, you know, it, 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 you know, there's all this stimulus, but the fundamentals keep getting worse. So, so it just keeps bending over. And we broke another key level um, uh, recently at 1880 on the S&P 500. And then the final chart just shows, here's the most important thing to me, the classic sign of top like back in 2000 and 2007, because bubbles just keep going and they're irrational. And is it when the smaller companies start underperforming a large company significantly? And this last chart shows that not only uh, are the small cap stocks down twice as much as the large cap stocks recently, but they've broken some very key levels. And so sometime in the next couple of months, we're gonna break down more substantially, but remember the first chart. The first chart says this will just be the beginning of another 2008-like crash, which is gonna go deeper 
and 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 be steeper on the downside, just like it was steeper on the upside. So I don't know exactly when this is going to happen. Nobody does. The short term, very hard to predict. I'm having a big meeting with my company uh, right after this call with our shorter term analysts and our longer term to consider where we're at because we're at a critical point. But I'm telling you, in the next year, if you're ever going to protect your wealth and protect your assets, this is the time to do it because I think. Sure. And I've been predicting that, that, that 2016 will likely, beginning to end, be the worst year for stocks since 1931. And you said that months and months ago here. Then we heard almost the exact same headlines plagiarized by Soros, by the Wall Street Journal, by the Financial Times, and the Royal Bank of Scotland came out and said, sell everything. I mean, this is really scary. Uh, I mean, you've been probably the most accurate person out there, I've got to say. How bad do you think it's really going to get? Well, well, again, I mean, after they have extended a bubble that was already extreme, more extreme than the 1920s bubble, and of course that led to the Great Depression, what people don't understand is when you stretch an economy so far with excessive debt, and, and, and the longer an economy does well, the more everybody speculates and borrows and feels okay, um, when you do that, you're going to have a bigger downturn. So, so this is going to be something like the 1930s when it finally yes. cracked. And the only reason it hasn't cracked thus far is $9 trillion, and some people estimate much more, but I'm conservative, $9 trillion sure. in printed money, not counting all the... Oh. And now you've got the giant populations unraveling worse than then. Uh, you've got this socialist idea more entrenched than it probably was in the 30s, this is going to be a move to bring in socialism and wealth redistribution that will only stall things even worse. Uh, I've got to say, I agree with you. You've been proven right, and I think it's going to be far worse yeah. because people were more self-sufficient in the 30s. Most of them knew how to grow a garden. Most, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but we got a bunch of immoral, spoiled brats in this country, and I, oh, my God, I'm scared, actually. Well, and I, I tell you, it's worse in China because they've overbuilt. They're the big bubble. We were the biggest bubble in the roaring 20s. Uh, in the world, even though the whole world had a bubble, China is the biggest bubble today, and they've moved a half a billion people, twice <laughs> the population, from farms where they were self-sufficient into cities where they have no skills and only dependent sure. on something for nothing. Sure. So it's a time bomb, that, that's, and the fuse is getting short. So let me ask you this. Time frame is 2016 worse or 2017? I mean, when do you think it really becomes evident that we're screwed and then confidence falls out at the bottom? They'll have some new banker bailout plan, some new bubble, but they're saying they're out of bullets. Do they just admit there's nothing and then let it all stagnate? I mean, whoa. Well, well, well first, yes, I, I think we're getting signs from everything I said earlier that this bubble's finally blowing. It is really hard to predict. Ask me because I've had to do it in the past when a bubble's gonna blow, but we're finally getting the signs. When it does, it's gonna be dramatic. Just like we just saw China down 45% at stock market in two and a half months. It'll eventually be down 90%, but half the damage of a multi-year downturn was done in two and a half months. So I always tell people it's better to get out of a bubble a little bit early, because when it finally does hit reality for everybody in La La Land, then it happens sure. very Rapidly. So Royal Bank of Scotland is absolutely right when they say sell everything. Yeah, I, I really, I mean, norm, normally I'd say, hey, get a little more of this or that. No, this is a time, I'd say for the next year, even though it may not start to bottom until early to mid-2017 and may not ultimately bottom for 2020 to 22 in our longer-term forecast, I think most of wow. the damage is going to be done in the next year. So you say depressionary in many areas of the world, as bad or worse. Will it be unevenly distributed like the last one? Uh, you say we're not as bad as others. Will it be a depression here? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think, uh, Alex, the most important thing is we triggered the last great recession, they call it. It, it, was, it was starting to be a depression. 2008. A subprime crisis, but it only triggered a debt crisis that already existed around the world. This time, after all this stimulus, six years of endless stimulus, if this fails, people are going to lose greater confidence and this is gonna happen around the world, and the Chinese are the leading buyers of real estate in the leading cities around wow. the world, especially English speaking. When they stop buying, and they already are, oh, 
the whole Harry, of Harry Dent, I'm going to keep you at the bottom of the hour uh, so we can come back with one more short segment and talk about how we protect ourselves and other technicals you can give folks. HarryDent.com, and we're also gonna, you, you can get his book for free, basically, folks. You should. It's a great deal. I know what publishers cost. cost about six bucks a book, his own yep. book. And, and then uh, he, say, he says, I'm correct, about six bucks for a nice book like that. And then he gives you shipping, four fifty. He's losing like two, three dollars on it. Uh, and it's a great book. You really need it. Roger Stone, the shadow campaign head for Trump. He's going to be on Megyn Kelly tonight, but he's going to be with us at 2.30 Central today. Just got the text. And um, he's gotten us in with the feed at the Trump event. We're going to have the feed of that. CNN's also running into the trough. I expect to have them. They're trying to shove us out. That's just what the mainstream media do, does. They think they own and run everything. They're a joke. And Trump is really killing that. Uh, I want to just spend a minute or so on what people should do. Also on what our guest thinks of what's happening in the economy, uh, Mr. Dent of uh, DentResearch.com. But before we do that, Max Kaiser, another smart guy, made a lot of accurate predictions, predicted the crash that was coming, some other things, but been, you know, had, made a few mistakes as well, but, but a smart guy, outside the box, uh, international TV host, former stockbroker. Uh, I brought up Dent to him and said, look, Dent's been a little more accurate than you in some ways. What do you say to him uh, when you think gold's going to come back up? Uh, here's that clip for Mr. Dent. Look, Harry Dent has been really good in terms of the last five years. If you, if you, with all the people that you just mentioned, he's probably got the hottest hand in terms of calling deflation, where everyone else has really been saying inflation. He was very good to say deflation. All commodities have been deflating, oil's deflating, and he includes gold in that basket. But what I, my response would be, look at gold outside of just the U.S. dollar, because if you look at it, through other currencies, it's reacting very, very well. It's hitting new all-time highs, number one. Sure, number so two, outside of the rigged economy, it's doing well. Well, on a global basis, it's it's responding well. And, and the second point I would make is that what one, one aspect that Mr. Dent does not get into that I think is worthy of consideration that would change the dynamic pretty dramatically is if a country like Russia or China decides to partially back their currency with gold. So gold is once again monetized. Then then it's really a different paradigm at that point. That's Max Kaiser from Russia there in Red Square Tuesday joining us. Mr. Dent, your response to what he said. Yeah, I mean, first of all, Max, I've been wrong at times too. Anybody that makes strong forecasts is going to be wrong. And we did see this deflationary thing. That's been our big theme is, is the baby boomers slowing down, the largest generation in history, and a deflation from the bubbles of the past, and especially from the overexpansion of China. So I agree with you. I mean, that's what's been most hitting gold is that China is one of the biggest buyers of gold in the world, not, you know, not just industrial consumers. Which but is he's saying if their stocks go down and their currencies devalue, that they'll, they'll run to gold, whether, whether, whether you think it's a commodity or real or not. Well, well, I, I, I think they're learning the same thing that gold was a bubble. I mean, I was, I was debating, uh, you know, many gold bugs, and, and they always say, oh, well, gold's not a bubble. I'm like, it went up 670% in 10 years. That's a bubble in any stock, any real estate, any commodity. Um, so I think gold is just coming back down to reality. I think long-term gold is going to do well because we're going to have an emerging country-led boom. Oh, yeah, I think you answered that fairly. Uh, I think you're both very smart. People can make their own decisions, but obviously time will tell. In the three minutes we've got left, other key points to look at, uh, other info you want to impart to folks and uh, any other predictions? Well, real quickly, for people in gold, we've been saying it's due for a bounce, uh, 1150 to 1300. We're almost 1150. Uh, I would say uh, around April, reevaluate gold. If it's up, then I would say sell. I would also say get into the safest, high quality bonds, short term and long term, but short term at first, because that's the only thing that did well in, in the Great Depression. Stocks, commodities, and real estate all went down and were slow to come back. And you've got to get out of stocks on any rallies here. I, we've already violated some major areas, and I'm saying every time the stock market bounces, and my, my short-term people are telling me we're due for a bounce here. Well, if we bounce in the next couple of weeks or so or month or whatever, sell, get out. If you're wrong, you may miss 5%, 10% at best. If I'm right, you could avoid 50 to 70 percent decline are we going to see when this finally goes belly up completely people jumping out of buildings again in mass well that happened uh suicides peaked in the middle of 1932 at the bottom of the stock market and homicides 
murders peaked in the uh, middle of 1933 at the bottom of the economy. Yes, these things are impacted. Yeah, so folks need to get ready to weather the storm uh, again. The website, where's the best place for folks to go on your website to find the free book deal where folks just pay the five bucks for shipping? Yeah, just go to harrydent.com, free book, four ninety five shipping. Um, and in the upper right-hand corner, we have a free daily newsletter, Economy and Market, that you can also just put in your email and you get a free newsletter. And we just want you to listen to us until you fall in love with us. That's all. <laughs> well, I think we've uh, definitely fallen in love with your information. We like to be on top of things, Mr. Dent, and I, I follow your newsletter as well. Thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you again. Thank you, Alex. All right. Look, we're not fear mongers. We just want to be ready for what's coming. That's called being, you know, in charge, ready, and, and being competent and taking care of your family. And, uh, you know, we hope for the best, prepare for the worst. But this is serious. Stay with us. We're going to go to Oregon on the standoff. David Knight, Joe Biggs, and... Travis Knight, David Knight's son, who works here, does a great job. His cameraman are out there in Oregon. We're going to be going to him here in just a moment. Where the globalists controlling the federal government have had a major propaganda victory against the liberty movement. Doesn't matter. For every victory they have, we have 10 bigger victories. I can give you scores of victories after they leave us. I'm going to do that. But we need to learn from our mistakes. And I have been through this so many times, watching people get set up and manipulated, it makes me want to throw up. And the exact aftermath of what we predicted and who the players and what was going on is now being confirmed. I just can't believe it. I don't know what it is about rural patriot communities. Listen, they love the show. So many times we put their stories out in the spotlight and then in come the federal operators and they end up, they won't talk to us anymore, and then I'll watch them set up and thrown in jail. And it's, it's, it's just very, very sad. And they convert them in seconds. They come to them and say, Alex Jones saying bad things about you. They never ask to see it, never ask for the proof. They just go, he is, and there's that moment of brotherhood. You care about me. Yes, now I'm the commander, and I'm going to protect you now. You're with me now. You do what I say. I'm your bodyguard, and then it's all over. They are under the wings of the system, and of course, under the wings of the system, they eat you alive. Uh, but there's still people inside. The Bundys have said, let them out. You know, you know come out. Uh, I think the Bundys are good people. They've been manipulated. It's very, very sad. Uh, and we don't want this to turn into any more of a victory for the globalist. Uh, to take that huge victory we had with the Bundys before, where the feds were in the wrong and had to turn back, and now, boy, you, you've seen how their psyops work. And I've had Marine Corps officers on about it yesterday and top CIA, uh, you know, field operatives on and, and CIA commanders on and F former FBI agents on and all of them telling you it's all a stage. It's a setup. Get out of there. And people don't listen to them. You don't listen to people that have seen it, covered it, and been through it. They've got a psychological handbook with sociology on how to manipulate you. And they think it's funny to chump the American people. Now, don't worry. All those feds and the rest of them are going to have the globalists take their pension funds, you name it. They have no future. They'll be turned on. They always are. They think they're running psyops on us. Their bosses are running psyops on them. Oh, it makes me angry. So we're going to go to our, uh, our reporters here in just a moment. Before I do that, and then Ron Paul's coming up on huge developments. Before we go any further, though, ladies and gentlemen, we're offering the best special ever on DNA Force. In fact, where did my bottle of DNA Force go? I had a, here it is, I had a bottle of it in here yesterday as they put the top on it for me. I take one of these at lunch and one of these at dinner. They say the best time to take it is really at dinner, so you digest it all night on more of an empty stomach, so none of this key deliciousness uh, ends up getting bound with other food and, and, and not getting fully absorbed because it is a true high-quality nutraceutical. Don't want to be wasteful with these babies. And when you research it at InfoWarsLife.com, you'll find out why it's so special. For a limited time, get our flagship nutraceutical, DNA Force, for 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com while supplies last. And by the way, they will sell out at current sales rates by Saturday morning. And so we won't be able to offer that special, obviously, anymore very soon. Uh, this is our most advanced product in the InfoWars Life line. 
We did extensive research, designed this formulation for maximum impact. It includes patented ingredients that are lab quality. Those ingredients are difficult to source. True. Bio PQQ, not synthetic. DNA Force is loaded with the patented bio PQQ compound, which is backed by 175 clinical studies by major respected research firms and facilities, universities, you name it. It's been all the rage for 20 years in Japan. And by the way, folks, you can get it in our product for much less than other people sell it. We, we discount it mightily. And it, it's something you have to experience. This amazing compound is known to influence nerve growth and regeneration. It's known to support the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondrial uh, systems that are the source for energies in our body. And then it goes to the CoQ10, the transresorvitol, uh, and all the rest of it. I'm not going to get into everything that's in it. Just one of the ingredients per batch cost us $30,000 or about $14,000 uh, a kilo, and that's the Bio PQQ directly from Mitsubishi USA. It's made right here in America, and it is amazing. It's the equivalent of 300 pounds of blueberries per pill. The Bio PQQ, and it has the same effect as the amount of vitamin C and other cofactors in 300 pounds in studies of blueberries. That's all up at InfoWarsLife.com. Go read it for yourself. What a game changer. And comparable nutraceuticals, we're about to go to our reporters, comparable nutraceuticals sell for $300 to $600 in the United States and Europe. Really, stuff of this quality you don't get on store shelves. What you do is you go to medical doctors, and then they'll have stuff that, that you get from a prescription from them. But it's not even really prescription. They just say that because people then think it has the value because it does cost a lot. Uh, and, and so they're trying to make a lot of this prescription because of how dramatic its effects are. So find out for yourself, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And finally, I almost forgot, we now have free shipping on all orders above $50. We got a bunch of other specials running as well, like uh, free shipping and 10% off on the water filtration system, uh, shower filter, uh, the new Max Pro, super fast flow, amazing, InfoWarsStore.com. Okay. We have former Congressman Ron Paul joining us, coming up uh, for 20 minutes at the next hour. Uh, we also have Richard Reeves from Iowa, where they're going to have the big uh, Republican debate without Donald Trump. He's got his own feed, inviting the media, including us there. CNN says they're carrying the feed, which means they'll probably show up and say they run everything. It's just, we'll see what happens. We're going to have that feed, all the feeds, we'll cover CNN's feed, our feed, Fox's uh, debate with reporters on the ground in Iowa and reporters on the ground in Washington. We're going to have David Knight and, and uh, also Joe Biggs. I think it'll be great to have them maybe with Skype in their hotel rooms, you know, aimed at the TV, Mystery Science uh, Theater or, or Political Science Theater 3000, as we call it. Now other people do. So the point is, uh, this is a real reporting operation. This is real analysis. Nobody else has been doing this. Now we're getting copied by a lot of folks, which is what I want. We want to change the way the media operates. Most media won't even cover what somebody else is covering. We don't care. We're not territorial. We're not even competitive. We're competitive with the globalists and their tyranny to stop them. We're in a war. This is warfare. We use the weapon of the truth and credibility and, and, and no-holds-barred savage viciousness because that's what it takes to these baby-harvesting globalists. All right, let's now go to Oregon with David Knight, veteran of the first Bundy siege, uh, where the feds threatened to shoot him from 20 feet away and everybody else if they crossed a line. They peacefully crossed it with their American flags on horseback, and it made history. And we'll probably roll some of that footage in the background for TV viewers. Radio listeners just type in historical footage, feds surrender to citizens. Uh, that was, of course, last year there at the Bundy Ranch uh, in southern Nevada, but now he's in beautiful rural Oregon. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and going out there so quickly. Uh, David Knight, what can you tell us? David Knight, InfoWars.com. Alex, we're here at the, as you can see, there's the road close sign. About uh, four or 500 yards down, there is a blockade by the uh, police, by the FBI. Uh, we went down to that blockade, and surprisingly, they were pretty chill today from what we've been told from reporters who are here. Uh, covering this and as you if you can turn around travis and and show uh, all the people that are backed up here there's quite a few reporters here we had uh we had several police vehicles that were here earlier uh that have now left but there's still a police vehicle maybe about 100 yards down that way 
uh, we went up and uh, talked to them and said, look, we'd be willing to go in and uh, talk to the, the people who are still in there. Reports are there's still about five people. Besides the ones who were arrested at the uh, uh, shooting of Lavoie Finicum, they had eight people come out yesterday. Three of them were arrested. Uh, the other five were let go. We are being told that there's still five people inside at this point. We said we'd be willing to go in and talk to them. We've got a history of covering these issues. And it really has gone on to a point where it's not about what's the, gr the grievances of these groups out here. It's now become about this militarized standoff and whether or not these guys are going to get out or whether or not they're going to, to go down fighting. And, and that's not what this should be about. This should be about the grievances that these people have who are being uh, turned out of their farms that they've had for sure, generations. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, getting back to the, the fact that I asked you, I said, uh, and his Skype just broke up, we'll, we'll, we'll reconnect. I, I mean, I said, hey, if you want to go in, I don't order people to go into a dangerous situation, uh, you know, go in, talk to them, try to get them to come out, saying, look, this is only going to end bad if you don't. Uh, and that's what Bundy's asking him to do as well. And I want to find out if that message has been relayed. I mean, I'm tempted to just get on the phone myself and call the FBI up. Uh, which I've only done before whenever, uh, you know, people call up here saying they're going to carry out violent attacks on folks. I, I have reported that on air uh, and to the FBI and Secret Service before because uh, we're trying to stop a civil war here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and definitely there are some foundation forces that want this to get violent and are rubbing their hands together. The leftist media loves it. Uh, they really want to get a civil war going. Uh, what did, did the police and the feds say they'd relay that message uh, to whoever's in charge, David Knight? Well, they said... They said they could not make that determination here. They said we could go to the tactical center and we could talk to them and see if they thought that was uh, something that was viable to do. But as, as you point out, and as we've had guests on, we had uh, Joel Skousen saying, look, you need to move on. He said this many weeks ago. He said, uh, you need to move on. You've made your point. We have uh, the congressman here who's sympathetic to the issues that are going on here in Harney County, sympathetic to the uh, injustice that was done to the Hammond, saying, you've made your point go away before any of this, you know, before anybody gets hurt. And unfortunately, that hasn't happened. We're also going to try to talk to uh, people. We just got here this morning, Alex. Uh, we got in uh, early in the morning, probably about one o'clock. And then we had a couple hour drive to get here. So we haven't had a chance to talk to anybody in town. I want to get a sense of uh, the uh, public's uh, concerns about this. We're being told by the governor, by the FBI, that the uh, residents were cowering in fear. I don't think that's the case. They had multiple times that they came in here and, and were talking to people with town meetings, both in Burns, and they were on their way to a, another uh, meeting. Well, Biggs was John there. He, he told me about 60% of the people were for yeah. the Bundys, but even some of those were like, but this has gone on too long. So it's probably about 50-50. Right, right. And, and part of what was going on and, and what happened uh, the night that uh, Lavoy Finnegan was shot, they were going to a meeting in John Day. It was reported to be several hundred uh, people. One of the reports said about 400 people were waiting there to to talk to them about what's going on, what can be done about the BLM. So it was not just a standoff that they had going on here. They were educating uh, the people, talking to them about uh, issues, uh, maybe uh, strategizing about what they were going to do. We're going to try to talk to some of the people. Sure, obviously it wasn't terrorism. Point. The feds have been pushing, no. stealing land. Civil disobedience yeah. is a good thing overall. The problem is a lot of the locals didn't want them. They didn't have the grazing rights, clearly. The Hammonds had backed off and said they didn't want them. Uh, and they were opening it up to be infiltrated by organizations and groups to misrepresent them. They were being set up in a trap, and the Skype is breaking up. We're going to go back to him in a moment, and we're going to finish up with David Knight and get a former Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs's take uh, on the whole situation. And, uh, you know, Joe is really upset that the ADL would dare to claim that he was part of this and helped take it over and stuff, and we showed up, you know, a week into it and covered it and said we thought it was a bad idea. But I explained to Joe, that's just what these liars do. Uh, that's why they have no credibility. It's why the government doesn't even use the ADL or Southern Property Law Center material anymore at the FBI level officially because the lawsuits they've lost, the issues with their line. I mean, they are just real pieces of work. Uh, but I just want to be clear. I warned Atari they were infiltrated. They ended up they were. Uh, and then our coverage helped the federal judge, you know, come to the point of saying this is staged, letting them out. Uh, and then they spun that in the media that I was against all militias. That's what the feds that are inside these groups do. When I warn them, look out, here's the tactics. People see those tactics and they go, don't listen to him, he's a fed. I'm a fed like I'm an Easter Bunny jet pilot from Planet X. I am a patriot, purebred Texan, 1776er, committed to freedom. And the fruit of what we've done is absolutely overwhelming. Um, but I mean, it just it's, it's just absolutely a patriot out in the woods when some guys in camo telling them, I'm here to protect you, I'm your buddy. People just fall for it every time. 
versus that fancy pants city slicker Alex Jones. You know, don't listen to him. Uh, and it just really, really implodes every single time. I think if they you know, feel like they should do this, I think they should go talk to the Tactical Center people. And, you know, this is really to ascertain whether they're being run by the Southern Poverty Law Center or not. Because if, it, if it's not a bad batch of feds, they're trying to de-escalate this, uh, they would say, okay, yeah, go ahead and go in and talk to them. Uh, that's where, you know, the feds will only get more information that way. Either way, we need to try to get those folks out before the feds decide to move in and we have some new Waco. I mean, only a crazy person will be against that. If they don't want to send our reporters in, like David Knight with known pedigree of just being a calm patriot, because uh, I'm known as a hothead, maybe they could say no to me, that's fine. Uh, if they don't send in somebody like David Knight or Joe Biggs, uh, then uh, something's going on here. It's classic to send in reporters uh, that are somewhat sympathetic to a group, uh, and uh, hopefully the folks inside will now listen to me. They may have a controller in there still, though, manipulating this. Uh, let's go back now with the Skype feed to uh, David Knight. David, uh, are you guys going to go back to the Tactical Center and, and put forward that offer? I mean, the, the feds are obviously watching right now. Yeah, yeah, we are. And as we told them up there at the checkpoint, of course, they didn't have the uh, capability making decisions. So it was a state uh, trooper there. He's very cordial, very polite. The FBI guy was a little bit skittish, uh, didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they were. They said they could not make that decision. But we told them, look, we're known to these people most likely because we've covered these issues a lot. Uh, we want to try to talk them out of this. They have now made this about something other than the grievances that people had, something other than the BLM. This is all about uh, the public perception is we've got uh, crazy men with guns that are going to shoot each other or shoot anybody that takes them out of there. That's not going to help anybody. It doesn't help sure, them. Sure. Do we even movement. know if they know that Bundy since last night is telling them come out? We don't know if they know that or not. Yes, exactly. Good point. Ammon has told them to leave. We've had uh, so many people telling them from the very beginning, this was not a good strategy. That's what we said from the very beginning. Uh, it was very different at the Bundy Ranch because they had the support of the entire community. Uh, they were very media savvy about the way they were going. The to community had been screwed house. over. 34 yeah. of the 35 families since the 1870s had been run out. They were shooting people on bicycles in the back. People were fed it was up. Actually, it was actually more than 50 ranchers that had been run out of there, Alex. Uh, and, and Clive and Bundy was the last rancher there. And, of course, very similar situation here from what I understand. Uh, the Hammonds were about the last ranchers that were here. The BLM wants their land. And it's kind of checkerboarded with... Uh, uh, some other area that the uh, BLM asserts control over. So I understand that commonality there, and we need to get back to those issues. This has become a side issue. It's become a distraction, and it's really giving the whole movement a black eye, painting it as violent when it really should not be violent. Well, you guys are filing key reports. We'll have them on the nightly news as well. I want to come back and talk to Big Sum, and then if you've got other points, pop in as well. We're going to break in 50 seconds. Other key points, David. Well, Alex, one of the things I said before, I don't know if you got it when we uh, lost our, our connection, uh, we want to talk to the people in the different communities that they were going out to talk to. The night that they shot Lavoie Finnicum, they were heading out to uh, John Day. They had uh, estimates were about 400 people waiting there to talk to them. So we want to try to, uh, if we can, locate the witness that was in the car with Lavoie Finnicum with the shooting. We've had two people that were initially detained and then released, and they give a different story. Of course, uh, Mark McConnell, who was in, uh, the other car that was further away from Lavoie Finnicum gives a very different story than uh, Victoria Sharp does. Uh, what she was saying was there was no question in her mind. David, that stay there. We've got to come right back on the other side, picking up with that, and we'll have G Joe Biggs as well. Stay with us. Joe Biggs is on the ground in Oregon, uh, about seven miles away from where five people are still holed up. Uh, some of them left uh, in the last 24 hours. Three of them were arrested. Several were released, like the Bundy's bodyguard. Uh, so, and, and other folks left the day it happened magically. Some of the most outspoken people uh, left. So, we're going to be tracking and watching who gets released down the road uh, from the group that was arrested in the car. If somebody just quietly gets the charges dropped on them uh, later, but other people don't, we're going to be tracking all of that so we can educate everybody how to not get caught in this next time because this is mainly an information war. The globalists want to make it physical. Uh, Joe Biggs. Uh, obviously covered this for a week uh, a few weeks ago out there in the middle of it as it was building up uh, and he joins us now uh, out there where the media is uh, at the checkpoint uh, Joe Biggs what are your observations where do you think all this is going well at this point in time uh, they have pushed this blockade back um, to where 
we are, I would say, at least a few miles away now, definitely maybe seven miles away from where the actual refuge is. And like David said earlier, there are some police that are over this way watching this. This is like the first stop. Uh, they usually call down, I'm, a, I'm assuming, to the state troopers and FBI and let them know what kind of vehicles are coming, how many occupants. And then if you go down there, um, they'll stop you and uh, talk to you earlier. We went up there and approached them. You know, we didn't have any trouble this time but I'm pretty sure their posture changes at nighttime when all they can see are headlights coming at them. Um, but like you said, they have released some people. Some people have been uh, uh, captured that have left that area. Um, they're saying that they believe uh, there could be another five people still uh, holed up in that location as well. From what we do know, uh, Ammon Bundy and the, the six other people that were uh, captured are uh, being held in Portland, Oregon, at a, uh, a prison uh, up that way as well. And, of course, in the case of Hal Turner, it was a known FBI asset. We exposed him first, and hackers got into his computer. Uh, once that all came out, they went ahead and burned him and put him in prison. Uh, so there might be some lessons here, too, for folks that uh, were playing both sides who might get sent up the river. We're just speculating from past events. We're not accusing anyone of anything here. Well, just I mean, well here, you got to choose your battles. You know, you know, like David was saying when he broke down the whole thing in, uh, in Nevada, that was a, a perfect storm for them. You know, they were in the right place, the right time. They had the backing. They had the people that showed up. And uh, they really made the uh, federal government look bad. And uh, they I think the federal government's been waiting on something like this to happen again. And they saw that these guys took this place. So they're, they're in an unknown land. They're not going to have the backing that they had then. And they now, we had a giant exist. Americana victory before. And now this erases a lot of it. And that's kind of sad. I mean, it is sad to see that because, you know, I do believe that Ammon has some pure intentions in his heart that what he wanted to do uh, was... Uh, oh, yeah, you can only admire the courage, and yeah. I get the feds are out of control, and under the Declaration of Independence, pretty much anything goes, but you got to choose your battles, and, you know, and it's just... You know, but they're in a place that they don't know, and there's people coming up volunteering saying, hey, I I'm here to support the cause, you know, and you let those people in. You know, they're saying this McConnell guy just showed up a few weeks ago and didn't really even know anybody, and all of a sudden he's releasing a statement that's... Uh, different than the, from the female who was actually in the vehicle when the whole thing went down. So it makes you wonder what's going on. The fact this guy, you know, goes on Facebook, puts out this testimonial about what he saw when he was... Uh, and then he gets you know, released. And then he gets released. Was he the one that ran up to you and said, quit saying we're feds? Oh, uh, no, no, that was uh, another guy. Yeah, yeah, the point is, is like, that they run around saying that we said that the Bundys were feds and, and they were all feds to then make them not listen to us when we never said that. And, and, and it's how they get the confidence of their targets. And it's just so sad. I've seen this over and over again. The little chicken sitting right next to the weasel has no idea what's happening to it. And we're like, hey, that's a weasel. And the weasel's got glinting eyes, little teeth. And we're like, ah, ah. And they're like, shut up. They're not a weasel. It's my friend. And the weasel just wrings their neck and goes, that's right. Right now, Joe Biggs and David Knight, as well as uh, Travis Knight, are out there in Oregon, um, miles away at a checkpoint. And when ranchers drive back out that are authorized to be in the area uh, under this little mini martial law, folks run up in mass, the reporters, there's a feeding frenzy, and ask what they saw inside. Let's go ahead and aim the camera over there while Joe Biggs narrates. Joe, what are we watching on screen right now? Well, we just saw someone uh, actually leave the area where the uh, refuge is. They came past the FBI blockade, and they're now here at this uh, media corral. Now, David Knight's actually at the window. Um, uh, speaking and uh, listening to what they have to say so we can get us uh, we can probably get an update from him when they uh, pull off to find out what it is if they were actually there or maybe they perhaps are ranchers who are uh, in that area as well. Sure but obviously so, uh, the big issue is you guys are going to try to get ahead of this go talk to the feds and others and say look you know who we are and you know we've thought this is stupid all along uh, but we're also patriots let us go in and try to get these people out well, the, well the, it's been collapsing for the past few weeks. I mean, there, there have been reports, and I've seen pictures on Facebook, where there have been different uh, groups of, like, Oregon militias and things like that who have gone in, stormed in, and they've started fighting. And then you've got this sumo guy coming out. So, I mean, this whole thing has been collapsing for the past, you know, couple weeks, you know, at a, at a high rate of speed. And now that they've got a few more people in there, all uh, avenues of uh, access are blocked off. It's only going to be a matter of time before more infighting starts. Uh, they get desperate. They leave, they get picked up, and it's over, or they come out angry. I mean, there was a live feed yesterday on YouTube where there was two guys in there sitting there saying that they, they've got guns and they're ready to go out fighting. So That's it's total idiocy. To but, then there, but then there's also two reports saying that there was a live feed going on with those same guys 
and someone runs up in the background saying, hey, have you guys uh, signed your release forms like they were actors or something like that? So at the same time, there could be all the people. Oh, out I, I got to say, could it be could people. be five. It could be five Southern Poverty Law Center people in there for all we know. Oh, they could. Yeah, they could be in there doing something right now to help go ahead and further demonize what's going on and make it look more ridiculous. Yeah, they've already waved people. giant crates of sex toys and dressed up in sumo wrestler outfits, and people have already run off and stolen federal vehicles. I mean, you can just see the scripting of all of this with the poor Bundys and everybody in the middle of it. Well, of course, because like you said, they had a huge uh, victory back in Nevada, and now they're going to use this and do what they can to demonize the rest of the patriot movement and uh, try to further along prove to the American yeah, people. Yeah, let's go over hey, and look. talk to the state police guy real quick. Walk over to him. Here, he's waving people over. Let's go over there. Ask him what's going on. Stick your mic in his face. You can't hear him. Oh, and our Skype just uh, broke down. Leave loud vehicle. Yeah, hey, here's David Knight real quick. You want me to have him plug in, and uh, he can uh, tell you what the, uh, the occupants in the vehicle said? Sure, what did the state police guy just tell you? Oh, he just said to move out of the way so vehicles can drive in and uh, in and out, just not to block the road. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Knight. we got about a minute and a half for Ron Paul. Uh, tell us what you just heard. Uh, Alex, I was. Uh, there were, this was a uh, rancher who lives here locally in the area. He said uh, they had to go through multiple checkpoints. He said they had uh, uh, a spotlight put on them last night, a uh, speaker telling them, stop the car, get out of the car, raise your hands, have your ID ready. Uh, they had a guy that had uh, that approached them with guns drawn. He said, uh, I, I feel like I'm in Africa. He says, I've been in Africa, and we had checkpoints. He goes, they weren't this, uh, this stringent. So um, I recorded what he had to say. We'll post that up on uh, uh, Infowars.com. Wow. So basically he's saying it's like martial law. Well, we need to go into yeah. town then and talk to some more of those ranchers, what they've gone through, because, yeah. I mean, imagine now putting your hands up, do all this, with all these major highways going through the area. They've got them blocked off. I mean, that is just ridiculous. And then how we have two witnesses that they just shot this guy when he had his hands up. Uh, that's all very, very suspicious. But then the guy that says he saw otherwise, he's released the former bodyguard of the Bundys. Yeah, I asked him, I, I said, do you think that the uh, law enforcement uh, presence here and what they're doing is a bit heavy handed? He goes, I, I don't want to make a statement about anything. He didn't want to be committal about that. But, but he did say when he was talking to people about what happened to him, he was absolutely amazed. And we've lost David Knight's uh, feed. Keep going, David, to go ahead and finish up your feeds back. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was just going to say, Alex, that uh, he didn't want to be committal and make any judgments. He said there's two sides to every story. I'm not taking a side on anything. I don't want to say that the uh, law enforcement presence was a bit too was heavy handed. Sure, but this is worse but than he, Africa and martial law, basically. All yeah, right, David. But that's we'll what be, he said. Yeah. We'll be checking in with you with Anthony Gucciardi in the fourth hour. Ron Paul's coming up. Oh, and the big Trump insider, Roger Stone, joins us from New York as he prepares to go on Megyn Kelly. We're getting former Congressman Ron Paul hooked up via Skype right now to get into uh, election 2016 to break down the War Powers uh, Act that they're trying to basically rewrite right now. Congress is writing the president a blank check for war. The legislation makes the unconstitutional Iraq war authorization of 2002 look like a walk in the park, is his quote. And then last week, a U.S. senator, that is just incredible, Chris Murphy of Connecticut, came out and called it worldwide military martial law, and it got no coverage. We're going to talk to the congressman here in just a moment about this and, and, and just what's coming next. Uh, here it is. Madam President, today um, I want to come down to the floor to speak very briefly about a um, resolution that the majority leader introduced, I believe, earlier today. This is an authorization for military force resolution that apparently purports to give the president legal authority to conduct military operations against ISIS. This resolution is a total rewrite of the War Powers Clause of the United States Constitution. Let's be clear about that. It is essentially a declaration of international martial law, a sweeping transfer of military power to the president that will allow him or her to send U.S. troops almost anywhere in the world for almost any reason with absolutely no limitations. Now, that is the sitting senator from Connecticut, Chris Murphy. He came out last week with that. We came out. Ron Paul came out. No coverage other than Defense One of this. And this is by the Senate leader. 
So I really appreciate former Congressman Ron Paul joining us uh, via video connection today here on the radio slash TV program to talk about this. He wrote an article at ronpaul.com, and it was also uh, posted, of course, on, on the countless other uh, liberty uh, sites. Congress is writing the president a blank check for war. The legislation makes the unconstitutional Iraq war authorization of 2002 look like a walk in the park. Now, when I talk about this stuff, some people say, oh, that's Alex Jones. He's an alarmist. But what about when a U.S. senator does it or someone super respected like Ron Paul, Dr. Paul? In the past, this would have gotten covered. The fact that there's crickets chirping in the background tells me something big is going on. Uh, former Congressman, thank you so much for taking time out to join us. Uh, you're welcome. It's good to be with you today, Alex. We've got a, about a three-second delay today, so I'm going to pretty much try to give you the floor, sir. Let's get into this. I mean, this is everything we've warned of. Obviously, we're not saying it's imminent tanks in the streets, but it's just part of this soft, creeping frog in the pot, sir. Yeah, this, this once again is uh, giving more authority to the president and taking it away from the Congress. This is sort of a traditional trend. It means that the Congress uh, is absent, uh, AWOL, because they don't want the responsibility. This uh, issue came up as we were talking about uh, the authority to go into Iraq and other places. And it was always, even when uh, we had a Republican president, the, Republican, the Congress didn't want to go along with it. The Democrats didn't want to go along with it. They don't want to assume any responsibility, so they'd rather give up their prerogatives. It's one of the main major mysteries of our country why the founders worked so hard to allow these powers to be put into the hands of the body that's supposed to be closest to the people. And it, it hasn't been literally usurped and taken uh, so much as the Congress gives it up. But then the Congress, uh, you know, after a while, it becomes a, uh, a whole, a whole long, almost a uh, policy statement because presidents, you know, whether they have the authority or not, they, they do a lot anyway. You know, they, they, we live in the age of executive orders. So this is very, very important because it's out in the open what they're doing. Like you say, Alex, they're not reporting it and letting the American people know. But, you know, they, they'll do pretty much what they want. Remember when we were op opposing the Congress voting on a, a authorizing bombing of Syria and the people didn't want it, and, and uh, Obama backed off. Yet he went ahead and did the bombing anyway. So uh, it's out of control. It's this endorsement and this fanaticism of endorsing this concept that actually was born uh, with Woodrow Wilson. We're, we're responsible for making world safe for democracy. Now that we are the sole superpower and we have the sole control of the uh, reserve currency of the world, and people do depend on us, at least for now, that we can get away with this. But it's very, very dangerous. That senator was very great on that statement. I wished he took that same non-interventionist policy with economic issues, but that's another story. But he is, was exactly right on that, and the Connecticut must uh, uh, be uh, pretty good because the former senator there voted against, uh, you know, the war going into Iraq, and he, I think he was the only senator that voted against it, uh, Shafee. So this is uh, another another blatant attack and where and you mentioned it, Alex this, this comes from the leader of the Republican Party and he's supposed to be opposing giving power to a democratic president but you know what they're thinking about they're thinking about well soon there's going to be a Republican president and besides I don't think whether you have the Republican president at least tradition has it or a democratic president they're all the same people so whether uh, they give it to Obama for a year uh, most people assume whether it's uh, Hillary or a Republican, they're all both are going to both sides will be authoritarian and they're going to make use of this. But it, very, very dangerous. It's an attack on liberty that should alert the American people. But unfortunately, we uh, in the liberty movement have a lot of work to do to wake up the American people. Dr. Paul, this for those that have read history like yourself is just very obvious, it's, it's confirmation of the march into uh, totalitarianism, just like we saw the spending authorization that they put through um, that gave the president a blank check. Th they're doing all of these unprecedented things now when there was months of debating, as you know, the big Iraq war resolution that you said was way too broad and, and opposed. And now they're just doing things that would you know turn heads if Putin did something like this or if the Chinese did something like this? Uh, I mean, why do you think they're suddenly doing this? And why would Mitch McConnell want to put into something 
uh, like this in place, and then why would the media not make a big deal out of it? Yes, and, and it wasn't up, uh, up fr front, you know. It was done on a Friday in the middle of a snowstorm, hoping that it wouldn't be covered, and it wasn't covered, and yet he felt compelled uh, to do this. So, yes, I think potentially there's always this uh, waking up the next morning and a major conflict going on, but uh, it's very suspicious that they're covering their bases because I think, you know, there is talk about expanding the war, uh, you know, uh, in, in Syria and, and, and even in Libya again, and, and everything is breaking down. Nothing worked in Iraq and nothing worked in Afghanistan. And there's a lot of people now, uh, you know, the Republicans aren't very good about a constitutional foreign policy. They want to grant this authority and there's a lot of them that want boots on the ground. And this authority that we're talking about literally gives the president the power to put boots on the ground in any country or even in our own country under martial law. It doesn't limit it to time or space or anything at all. It's just an open-ended. And uh, this, this is the reason why it, it does uh, raise the question is, do, do we, have we just uh, gone along with a, at least the presentation of what would be a military dictatorship? And uh, they may well have either plans or fears that uh, we're not all privy to. Of course, those of us who have been concerned are always looking for the expansion of presidential powers, and that's really the culprit. You mentioned the economic factors and how they get together and spend that money. And, you know, it's uh, just remember the pictures of Boehner and Pelosi's uh, arm in arm and passing these budget. And then our new speaker <laughs> went along and, and passed that budget, which was atrocious budget. And yet it was leadership on both sides. And uh, everybody wants reform, uh, except uh, in the areas that they don't want reform. Because it, other than for Rand, I think he's the only one who's taken the position that we don't have to spend another trillion dollars on militarism. What we need is a common sense. Absolutely, you know, I've said. Getting, and get out of these hot spots and don't go aggravating people. Yes, sir, Dr. Paul. I've, I've supported your son, obviously, president for the last two years. And when he was still at number one six, seven months ago, uh, and then now the media and all the manipulation has helped try to push him out of there. But, but separately, the, the thing I'm most proud of what he did, and, and, and I wish that he, he may be doing it, I don't see it in the media, is come back and say, you know, double down on what Trump said. Say, look, forget just not letting all Muslims in the country. We are going to end what's happening in Syria. Our government started it. Obama started it with the neocons and the rhinos and, and name the names of, of, of Graham uh, and, and the other senators like McCain and say, you helped fund al-Qaeda. You helped fund ISIS. That's what your son was saying boldly three years ago, then Cruz followed him and said, we're not Al-Qaeda's Air Force. He helped lead the military to say no, and General Dempsey, the chairman, to say no. That, that was an incredible Americana moment of stopping boots on the ground, toppling Assad, putting Al-Qaeda, ISIS in control. And then now we haven't heard as much about that. I think that's something that could bring your son right back to the front of the race if he comes out and says, look, I'm not the guy saying, you know, stop what's happening in Syria now. I'm the one that said three years ago, stop it, because that is so important. What do you say to that with election 2016 here, sir? Well, the whole thing is, is the American taxpayer and the American people suffer from the consequences of believing that it's necessary for our national security, which is, is a complete lie. You know, lies took us into the Iraq war, and the lies uh, continue. Right now, it's created this migration of millions of people. Europe is much more vulnerable than we are. We have our problems here. But the American taxpayer pays for this, and we pay for it by debt. And, uh, you know, they claim we have a decent economy, and we don't have to worry that much, and jobs are coming back, and all that nonsense. But we're paying for it, uh, the militarism, and there's a huge debt, and Europe is breaking out with a uh, major crisis, and you're going to see th uh, throngs of immigrants causing problems. And then the taxpayer, in our country especially, is, will be taxed for this. See, one of my approaches was quit subsidizing something. You won't have so much of it. And immigration is totally subsidized and rewarded. They come in. So I would say that uh, you've got to cut off the subsidies. But right now, even if you didn't cut off, even if you cut off the, the freebies, like all free medical care and edu education, that we'll have to spend money for maintaining, uh, you know, law and order where people aren't burning our cities down. 
Uh, but that is, this, was, this is a predictable event uh, because of the foreign policy. I, I really think that you cannot look at our economic problem, problems without looking at the foreign policy, because the foreign policy, uh, so many of them are saying, you know what, we need more of the past. It's sort of like the Fed saying, well, exactly. we have problems, so we have to print more money and use more debt. In foreign policy, in foreign policy, we get involved over there and we precipitate the hatred exactly. and the blowback and all these events. And then what do they say? Well, kill more Muslims. And I don't think that's going to be the solution. We, we need a new foreign policy. Dr. Paul, I want in the few minutes we have left get into the economy that you predicted and a few other issues and get your take on election 2016 and, 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 and some other points. But looking at Europe and the U.S. and others destabilizing it, funding radicals in the Arab Spring, putting the radicals in in Libya, Syria, and uh, Egypt, now bringing them in, knowing they're going to shoot and kill people and rape and murder every day. I mean, I have stacks of headlines and video. I know you're a news hound. Uh, I've, you've, you've never been on the show that you didn't know about a story I mentioned. Uh, so you're informed. You know how crazy it is. So it has to be a plan. Why would the socialists and the elites want to bring in Dark age level, anti-female, anti-liberty, uh, crazies. Not all the Middle East is like that, but we're bringing in, you know, from the really bad areas, what is the collective West doing? Because it's the same policy, as you know, from the U.S. to Canada to Germany to France. What is happening, Dr. Paul? Well, this has always bothered me about the uh, deliberate policy that seems to be uh, evil and backfires and stupid. And uh, it was, you know, even reading about the history of going into World War uh, II, and, and, I, and it would say that, well, they, they knew what was going to happen to Pearl Harbor. That story, I said, nobody could conceivably allow that to happen. But when you read and study it, they have ulterior motives. They have ulterior motives of saying, well, how are we going to mobilize the, uh, the American people to support it? How can we use our propaganda to support certain policy? And they get around to saying, well, if that's the price you have to pay, that's the price we have to pay. And we've heard, even heard so it's a giant false flag. say that 500,000 children died in uh, Obama. Yeah, yeah. So, so they, they do that. Chaos is a benefit to people who want a negative revolution. I want a peaceful revolution toward liberty. But there's others who would like to see revolution out of fear so that they succumb to saying, sure. Government take care of me economically. I want to be the kingpin. I want to take take over the world. So they actually use and deliberately cause this chaos. But uh, a lot of people don't want to believe that because it's hard to you know show the literal proof. Because what you're doing, what we're doing, is talking about motivations. And sometimes it's just as hard to believe that people like that exist in our government. But it's getting a little easier for me to accept that as the years go on. Dr. Ron Paul, we've only got a few minutes left. I want to ask you about a point that ties together and, and, and then ask you to promote the radio programs you're doing, the, the, the syndicated TV show, because it's really growing. The real revolution, though, is the grassroots now, not just coming 50,000 at a pop to your rallies, but actually sending your links out, your videos out, our videos out, subscribing to your newsletters, really continuing that awakening and that revolution against the socialist offering of Bernie Sanders and Hillary. They're going to use the crisis they helped create, as you've always warned, to bring in even more control. We've reached that crossroads where Donald Trump knows he can just go do his own debate, get more viewers. Uh, well, we can do that, too, for our message. So I think we've reached the point where it's an information war. Can you speak to that and then tie it in to the economy? Royal Bank of Scotland, sell everything. George Soros, sell everything. Uh, new banker bailouts on the horizon. The big event you've warned of, it appears, is, is in with sight. So media revolution, A, websites we should visit, and then B, the economy, sir. Yeah, and I think we are moving rather rapidly. I was on an interview yesterday where uh, they were trying to pin me down, and I don't like to do timing so much, but I really said by the end of this year, it's going to be pretty evident to most Americans that we really are in a recession, depression. And we've always been, even though the government claims, oh, things are okay, but they never look at the middle class and half of the population who is suffering and all the kids are still living at home and all the debt that we have. So there's a big difference. I continue to work on this message. You've known me for a long time, and I've used various things, whether I'm as a congressman or whether I'm a candidate on, on a national stage or whether I'm writing newsletters. But right now, I'm spending a lot of time on trying to, to get this message out through the YouTube. Our YouTube channel is growing, and I'd like people uh, to take a look at it, the Ron Paul Liberty Report on YouTube, uh, because uh, numbers make a difference, and, uh, and it's spreading. 
and it, it takes well, but I think you alluded to the fact that when you're, in, when you're a politician uh, or in office, you might get a little bit more attention, and I find that uh, to be the case. But there's still millions of people out there that are looking for information, but, uh, and you've done a great job in finding those people, but I know that it's a little more difficult. That is why I resort to uh, getting our program out, because the use of uh, short videos uh, in the campaign went very well in spreading a message. I'm gonna to continue to do that. But most important is trying to alert people to a philosophy of liberty and that, not for people to be despondent over this because I think we're making great inroads. We're making inroads on, on some nullification of federal laws. People are standing up against these sure. ridiculous uh, uh, drug laws that uh, put people in prison for life for nonviolent crime. Oh, I so agree. People are waking up, but they have a long way to go, and they have to realize that we have this obligation uh, for our own sake as well as for the sake of our country. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us, and we're obviously going to be watching the debates and following everything that's happening. A lot can happen still as we go into these uh, caucuses, but. Uh, in, in the final equation, out of all the candidates, obviously we'd like you know Rand Paul to be in there. Is there is there anybody else that we know is a constitutionalist? Uh, I mean, what about uh, uh, Hillary? Do you think the elite? And, and just, you know, just a quick answer, because I know you have to go to another program. Do you think that the establishment is getting ready to throw her overboard and bring in somebody like Sanders or Biden? Because it looks like they may indict her. Yeah, I think right now that looks like the case, and I thought they never would. So it must be pretty bad. Uh, I'm still suspecting that it will be neither, uh, neither Sanders or Clinton that they'll, you know, bring in Biden or somebody else like that. You know, and people say, well, it's way, way too late. But, uh, you know, back when uh, uh, Johnson was in office and, re re you know, said he wasn't going to run again, I think that might have been in March of, of, uh, of the election year, and they put it together. So, yes, there's still time for them to do that. But to look for an alternative, uh, the only one that even approaches and even talks about it and understands what a uh, non-interventionist foreign policy and an economic policy and anti-Fed position is only Rand that's talking about this. But uh, then again, you know, that's the message that they don't want to have heard. And, uh, of course, uh, we faced that same, same problem when I, I was running, uh, even when I would do well in election or in polling. You know, they just refuse it. But they are very, very fearful yes, of anybody talking about a foreign policy that challenges a military-industrial complex because they are very, very powerful, and they're in cahoots with the Federal Reserve. And that's how a lot of evil is done in this country uh, because of the corporatism yes, and sir. the Federal Reserve and the banking system. And now the medical system uh, works with them, too, and that's why they do so well. That's right, a takeover by the crony capitalists. Well, I just want to say this, sir. You look great for your age. You look even younger when I've seen you out there on the trail and in person and on TV than you looked even five years ago. So I guess it's been good being out of D.C. Uh, and, and, and we're so glad uh, you know, to see you looking so healthy and so young, sir. Thank you very much. It was nice being with you today. All right. God bless you. There goes former Congressman Ron Paul. Man, I wish that guy uh, was still in Congress and running for office. But, you know, he deserves after 30 something years of fighting to now, you know, only work uh, 10 hours a day for liberty. Uh, but what an amazing guy. And we'll be right back on the other side of this quick break uh, with a election coverage from Iowa, Richard Reeves. And he's going to be uh, telling us what's coming up tonight, 7 o'clock to right into, you know, 11 o'clock or so with our live coverage of Trump, uh, everything. It's all coming up tonight. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, from the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas. Liberty, justice for all, goodwill not wanting to have a war with the feds, not wanting to have a war with the white people, the black people, the whatevers, just wanting to have a free country, low taxes, uh, good schools, decent court system, uh, have a fair shake, level playing field, don't want to be run by George Soros and offshore banks that are tax exempt, trying to teach five-year-olds sex education and, and, and growing chimeras inside cows and genetically engineering everything and trying to force inoculate us with stuff. When we know the globalists are out there putting out zoological bioweapons through vaccines, I mean, you know, we're all in this together. That's all I'm telling you. And if they can get us fighting with each other, they win. If we wake up to that and transcend it, they lose. And I, until about six, seven years ago, thought we still probably have to have some physical deal. That still may happen with the feds and the military and the police. But the work of the patriots, the liberty movement, 
and the fact that the globalists then started calling him into their training sessions and going, George Washington's bad, Second Amendment's bad, Christians are bad, and people get up in these, and I should tell you about these when nobody knew it but us, and they would go, is this a joke? This is not a joke, and if you don't like it, we'll have you, you know, kicked out of here. And so they started sending me the footage of emergency management meetings and the rest of it behind closed doors, and it's treason. So we told the police and military this was coming. Then they were getting the classified briefings, being sold it, and went, wait a minute. And, and I tell you, the globalists were so weird. They would actually tell them in, in all sorts of meetings, Marine Corps, Army, police, state police, uh, federal marshals. When folks didn't even know who I was, they'd go. And there's a lot of other people educating them too, Jack McClam and others. Don't listen to Alex Jones. And, and, and we're watching your computers. Don't use it here at the station. You know, the military, don't, and people said, who's Alex Jones? I better look at that. I mean, it's, it's like telling your, you know, your 14-year-old son, hypothetically, you know, don't look at these playboys that I keep in this drawer. As soon as you drive off to work, what do you think your 14-year-old's doing? He's knee-deep in playboys. I, I, I mean, the globalists are smart in ways, but they're also super arrogant and just think everybody's going to go along with their bull. But people will if we play along with their narrative of how we're supposed to act. So there's a lot of craziness going on, but bottom line, world government, the new world order is not good for the average person or even mid-level folks or even a lot of elites. It is only good for a very tiny percentage of people, not even 1%, who did not get their money through free market, but by screwing people over, and now they want to pull the ladder up for everybody else. Folks, we got to stop it. We're going to Richard Reeves in Iowa with big news, a lot of exciting stuff uh, going on. And he's been filing reports all day. We're going to be live tonight, 7 right through 10 o'clock. I'm going to be here uh, not Skyping in from home or not Skyping in uh, from, you know, the road. But here uh, with the crew, we're going to have uh, Richard out there in Iowa covering it all, both the Trump event and we're going to be covering the Fox event. We're going to be covering how CNN covers Trump because they're, quote, you know, now taking his feed. That means they'll probably try to take control of it. And I told Richard, don't get in a fight with them. They try to do that because Trump had called us in to have a feed. That's just what they do. It's their nature at the CIA. That's what CNN is, literally, at the, at the mid-level and above. Uh, it didn't matter. We'll get their feed anyway. So Trump, the Trump will be transmitted here. On our, You're just one feed to us, then it goes out. We'll, we'll have CNN, and it'll be, it'll be critiquing that they jack the feed from us, so we're taking theirs. I mean, it's, 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 it's just let them act like they do. It's fine. That's, we'll just point out what they don't want the signal getting out. Uh, so... It's all unfolding, ladies and gentlemen, and all that matters is we show up on the playing field. We've got the right on our side. Our political and cultural and spiritual and economic muscles will grow. Our minds will get more sophisticated. Our ranchero huevos are going to get bigger, and we're just going to take these people down. Doesn't mean there's some utopia. We're not offering a utopia. Liberty and freedom and the chance to be a rugged individual and the animating contest. Now, you're going to end up so successful and wealthy and strong, your kids are going to start getting spoiled. That's the only problem with liberty is it just makes you so fabulously successful. If that dirtbag weirdo Bernie Sanders has his way, we're going to be in hell on earth very quickly. But Americans are so in. They thought Obamacare would be free health care. Was it dummies? He's now offering free health care if you just vote for him. I mean, give me a break. Now, let's stop right there before we go to Richard. I'm going to be hosting with Anthony Gucciardi the fourth hour. I'm going to go war game when the, sh when, when the third hour ends at 2 o'clock for 30 minutes with the nightly news crew on how we're going to, you know, basically handle all these feeds and all this news and breaking Twitter feeds and everything tonight when we kick off the live news at 7 o'clock. We'll have a news package at first, then go into live coverage. And then I'm going to come back in here to interview Roger Stone, who's the shadow advisor uh, of, uh, has been the head advisor, but the shadow advisor uh, of Donald Trump. He is in New York to be on Megyn Kelly tonight. You got to love it. While they're going to be bashing him, Trump's surrogate uh, will be, uh, you know, on air on their channel, and then Trump will be over here on his own channel, taking over all the channels. W what a stroke of genius. So we're going, we're going to Richard Reeves here in a moment. What a stroke of genius. He's asked CNN and others to give money to vets because he makes them make 10 times more money on record with the ratings he brings. They won't do it. So he's just there to raise money for the vets tonight and all of it go to him. The media claimed Trump wanted the money for himself before. Remember, they'll probably say it again. But that's why they're so discredited. So we're going to Richard Reeves. But first, we need to be funded. And we fund ourselves with hardcore products 
the best shower filter with four stages uh, that flows so fast. $10 or, or, or excuse me, 10% off promo code water, free shipping on top of it. That's InfoWarsStore.com. We now have free shipping on all orders above $50 as well. Get DNA Force for 25% off for a limited time. Get our flagship nutraceutical DNA Force for 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. All supplies last. This is our most advanced product in the InfoWars lifeline. Uh, this is a nutraceutical. Comparable products cost $300 to $600, and only doctors sell them or special health clinics. We just went out, got the licensing, got it, and it's the best stuff you can get at a blow-away price. It's regular price. Now it's 25% off. DNA Force is loaded with the patented BioPQQ compound, which is backed by 175 now plus clinical studies. The amazing compound is known to influence nerve growth and regeneration. You heard that right. We can actually say that because it's patented, proven. It is known to support the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. And then we got CoQ10 of the highest quality. Uh, we've got transreservatol. I'm, I'm just going to stop there. One ingredient when we make a batch of this cost us $14,000 a kilo. Just give me, and, and more than two kilos goes into each batch. So let me get this straight. Just the bio PQQ that we have in each bottle, the amount is forty to fifty dollars in leading competitors. Just the bio PQQ. Just the CoQ10 is thirty-five dollars or more for the proper organic type that we have, the the, the, the most absorbable type. See, I mean, see, just two of the ingredients, the dose we have it, are what this cost. I mean, are you understanding why it's such a good deal? And we've now brought it down to ninety-seven dollars. Normally, one hundred and thirty something, still incredibly inexpensive with all the ingredients. A total game changer. Now it's ninety-seven fifty. It will sell out by Saturday at the latest at current sales rates. And we're not getting more in for four to five weeks. The reorder is in, but going slowly because you have to triple test everything. We have to pass California standards because we sell there, which are almost unpassable. The top labs we use just can't keep believing that we keep passing these tests over and over again. We have those linked up on InfoWarsStore.com as well uh, with many of our products. Uh, now. Let's go to Richard Reeves, who is in Iowa. Richard Reeves, uh, you're going to be there tonight, uh, popping in off and on, covering what's happening at the Trump event. We'll be covering the feeds here uh, with uh, CNN's propaganda over Trump. We'll be covering Fox and their propaganda. Uh, so we'll be mixing all these feeds together. Folks that want to watch other stuff simply can have flip back and forth to whatever you want. We're going to give a lot of analysis of it all. And what Trump's doing is revolutionary, breaking away, doing his own deal, and showing the media it's about personalities and the people and ideas, not about you having the platform anymore. It's about we make the platform. This is the true death of the prostitute, Decepticon, globalist media, in my view. We saw the beginning of their fall. They were getting ready for it at the CNBC debate a few months ago where everybody just turned against them, and it blew up in their arrogant faces. Uh, and, and now we see that happening uh, as well. Very exciting. Give me your take on that and uh, what you've discovered in Iowa and what's coming up. Well, Alex, thank you. We are right out here outside of the Veterans Memorial Auditorium here at the Iowa Event Center. This is the location of the official Fox GOP debate tonight. And uh, this is the one where Trump will not be. And I tell you, there has just been an exceptional amount of news about this event with Trump not showing up. Uh, it's so far, at least as far as getting the word out and making this event bigger than ever, Trump has successfully navigated that. The question will be, will Trump be able to successfully navigate it into a super positive where he can come into Iowa and win big in the caucuses and the subsequent New Hampshire and South Carolina votes? So that's the question because it's a mixed bag of commentary from the people about whether or not they're happy about what Trump has done here snubbing the Fox News debate. So we are going to find out more about that. And by the way, we are going to be producing our own Infowars.com live feed from the Drake University event where Donald Trump will be speaking. So we will have that tonight. And uh, barring our Internet not, not working, because what we have had in the past is you get too many phones in a place, you can't get out. But we should have that feed. And... There's another thing. I don't know. If, I haven't been able to stream the whole show, Alex, today, but Senator Ted Cruz was on Hannity last night and threw down another gauntlet about the debate by saying, hey, they've got a location in Sioux City, Iowa, set up for Saturday night 
one-on-one -on -one debate with Ted Cruz. One of Ted Cruz's PACs is putting up $1.5 million for the veterans. So they've thrown down the gauntlet and set a challenge to Donald Trump. Show up Saturday night in Sioux City for a one-on-one -on -one debate Absolutely. with Ted Cruz. Absolutely. We've mentioned that. And, and guys, get me the latest if Trump has accepted that. I think at first he was saying probably no. Uh, because he obviously is bigger than Cruz nationwide. Only in Iowa is he neck and neck with him. And I like Cruz. I mean, you know, let's get that straight. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Trump can just go do his own debate and dominate. But I would like to see them do their own debate. And then every other network have to tune in just because it savages the old whore media uh, that thinks we're all trash with all those arrogant, blood-sucking, painted-up harpies that read off teleprompters. Yes, Alex. Well, you know, Right before you came in with me, you were talking about some of the history of, you know, the long years of slogging it out, building the patriot community up, uh, trying to defeat uh, the fact that the New World Order, one of their big modus operandi is to constantly divide and conquer us, divide and conquer, divide and conquer. And, uh, you know, they still continue that even now, divide and conquer. And finally, I mean, think about it, Alex, a year ago, we were facing the inevitable Hillary. We were facing the inevitable Bush as the nominees for the Democrat and Republican parties going into the general election. And here we are, a few months away from conventions, looking at potentially both those big-time Bilderberg establishment New World Order candidates, Hillary and Jeb Bush, could be gone through the primary process. Uh, a year ago, it wouldn't have even been imaginable. So we've uh, got a cornucopia of pretty good candidates on the GOP side, you Trump, Cruz, Rand Paul, uh, ben Carson, you know, Fiorina, these are sure, more the people are hungry candidates. for outsiders. Let me ask you this question, yep. because I know you're up there. You got a camera guy with you, but but I I almost don't want to interrupt the Trump event. So I think what we should do is get your feet in place. Right. Start covering it, you know, right as it builds up, right as he comes on. We should run an InfoWars feed that's clean because we can run as many feeds as we want. If our IT folks can set that up because we have the Daily Show feed that's already going. We're going to have the nightly news feed that goes live at 7 uh, that you know, covers all the debate, pre-coverage, post-coverage. I'll be there. Leanne McAdoo, Jakari Jackson, Darren McBreen. Rob Dew's on a well-deserved vacation. Hadn't been on one in six months. He's off snowboarding with his sons. Uh, so all of that's going on. Uh, and I th so, so I think we should have the fusion feed because we just then carry our own feed and mix that Trump feed in with the, the Fox feed to show both side by side with our commentary, but also give our viewers the straight Trump feed uh, since they've asked us to, I mean, obviously they're inviting a bunch of people in, but we should provide that clean Trump feed. So let's do that. You know, start it 30 uh, minutes before, run a clean feed to us. We'll leave it clean, just of what Trump says. But then if you want to get a mixed feed, you come to us with our live analysis because, uh, you know, it'll turn into a quite of a disaster if we don't because folks will think we're talking over Trump. Go ahead. Right. Uh, well, we are obviously, we're going to do everything we can to set up a great primary feed and then even maybe potentially a secondary feed that we could have a different shot or angle at. So, sure, let's uh, just yes, identify what that node's going to be and get it tested. And then, and because we folks, we're so fast moving. We're actually doing technicals here on air now that uh, this is moving this fast. <laughs> and, then, and then let's just well, find out the port that we direct that to to make sure it's on the front of the page so folks can find the Trump feed, our mixed feed uh, of the uh, other enemy transmission. Very good. We will follow up on that because we will be going to the Drake University event uh, right after this to get all set up and geared up for tonight. So it's really shaping up to be exciting. I think Fox is really going to be lamenting that they, they have crossed Trump uh, in, on this event. And Well, guess fact, what? He, he's double-crossing them even better, but in a patriot way. He's now saying he's probably going to bring other people that have been kicked out to the debate so he's having his own debate now this is really developing folks i tell you trump is quite the showman he knows what he's doing well he is a showman and i know a lot of folks from iowa uh listen to some of the commentary on some of the mainstream outlets and talking to people on the ground that a lot of folks in iowa are disappointed so trump is in a position where he needs to deliver something extra special he needs to by the really way though the iowans the are great folks given. they're yep. great folks but they've gotten the spoiled brat thing where, hey, because Fox keeps saying, and everybody, oh, he's disrespecting you not being here. Uh, don't you feel bad? They're like, yeah, we're kind of mad that he's not part of it for us. This is for the whole country, A. B, it's a setup. And C, he's doing his own debate speech. So it's pure bull. They ought to vote for who they think can turn the country around and who doesn't want to deep six it. 
and, and they shouldn't get mad at him making a smart move. Come on, Iowa. They shouldn't buy into the the mind control they're being given and, 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 and being lectured to by the establishment. But you're saying on the ground, the people you've talked to, it seems like, and listening to radio, because you know they screen those shows, Richard. Local right. radio is pretty much totally controlled in most areas. The globalists are scared of it. The last three years, they've really killed most local shows that even had high ratings that are patriot. That they, they put Democrat rat heads in everywhere. Right. Well, it's a, it's a mixed bag. You know, you've got the Trump loyalists that Trump can do no wrong. It's like the joke that Trump said recently where he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and people would still support him and be behind him. So you've got that hardcore set. But then, you, you know, you do have, I mean, there are a lot of Cruz supporters. I was at a Cruz event in Waterloo, Iowa, Saturday night. There was about 1,200 people there. So they're, they're going into that rhetoric that Trump is chicken or this or that or whatever. So uh, oh, yeah, Trump's real afraid division, to debate but, uh, Cruz. He's already debated Cruz like eight times. Right. Well, Richard, stay know, there. Stay there. Okay. Oh, my sure. gosh. Yeah, I mean, is this going to work? Trump is chicken. I mean, now you notice I'm just getting fully behind Trump because he's the underdog. And, and I just can't stand watching all these people pile on and then call him a chicken when he's lost hundreds of millions in TV money. Apparently, Mr. Trump considers Megyn Kelly... Very, very scary. And you know, Donald is a fragile soul. I mean, she might ask a mean question, and who knows what could happen. All right, Cruz, you know full well he knows he can hog all the attention in Iowa. The only state he's not destroying everybody by 15 points, 20 points in. And so it's somewhat of a gamble if the horror media can spin it that it's mean to Iowans. And it isn't. Okay, so the, the question is, are Iowans stupid? And and I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, Richard Reeves is there. I'm going to have our good buddy, uh, Mr. Stone, on in about 30 minutes. Gucciardi's coming in for 30, Then I'm coming in for the rest of the time with Stone, who's in New York. I, I mean, look, Trump knows what he's doing. He's shown he knows what he's doing. Uh, what does your gut tell you, Richard Reeves? Well, you know, Trump has made so many correct decisions throughout this whole process over the last seven or eight months that it's hard to argue with the decisions he makes. And uh, it does look, one thing for sure, as we stated earlier, he has made this into the biggest deal so far of the whole campaign. So everybody in the United States, unless they're hiding under a rock somewhere or don't have TV or don't have internet, they know about the situation with Trump. So overall, on a national basis, I think this is gonna make Trump way, 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 way big. So we'll just have to see how it impacts Iowa. We're gonna know here pretty soon. It's gonna, we're gonna know a lot tonight, and we're going to know a lot more over the weekend. And then Monday, finally, we're going to know a heck of a lot when we see that turnout. And by the way, Matt, our cameraman, was doing some research about how this impacts Fox, Trump not showing up at the debate. And it potentially impacts them in a big way up to about maybe about a half a dollar, half a million dollars per minute difference. No, in I know. It varies. Revenue. It varies. They were getting 750 to a million uh, a few days before this, already selling, and people are back. It was in the news, backing out of the contracts. 150 thou uh, is what right. it's going for now. So, so they claim they're getting all this hype, and Fox is like, "Oh, great, he did this. We're getting all the attention." No, Trump's getting the attention. Everybody wants to watch Trump. You're screwed, you neocon, fake bastards that have been trying to bring us down forever as well. We're sick of you. And so, people, people can watch porn online. They don't need to go to Playboy magazine to look at Megyn Kelly. Okay. So there'll be more people watching Trump tonight than there will be watching the porn channel. Sorry. Right. Well, and I, that's why I think that Donald Trump's going to have basically open source video feeds. We're going to have the Infowars.com feed. CNN will have their feed that they're being fed by from the Trump campaign. And so it's going to be an open source event. Let's talk about Trump's the wild card. Want. Let's talk about the wild card as we go to break right. here and come back with Gucciardi. He's coming right in because i got to get planning for the live debate coverage uh, right now. And then Stone's on in 30 minutes, folks. What about Sanders and that Microsoft is running both caucuses? He's absolutely right. I mean, uh, total manipulation, a perfect system to hack and run the whole thing. Absolutely. Our worst nightmare is Microsoft and Bill Gates and, you know, Mr. Eugenics coming in and running this. And, uh, yeah, that, I'll tell you what, that's super wild card. And, you know, we had Bernie Sanders go to the White House to see Barack Obama. And I don't think maybe, you know, who knows exactly how that conversation went, but one of the possibilities about that conversation was, uh, you know, just like Bill Hicks, that joke that he would tell you, hey, they bring you in, they show you a, a video that nobody's ever seen of the JFK assassination, 
to say, hey, all right, Bernie, look what happened here. We got this video. Nobody's ever seen it, you know. So, hey, you, you need to do what we're, we're telling you, Bernie Sanders. So, and, there, and there's the other one. Hey, puppet card. on the left, puppet on the right. Wait, there's one guy holding both puppets. <laughs> Richard, great job. You're going to be popping in on the nightly news coverage tonight through, running that great feed. You and Matt, who's normally in the control room running things. Great job, gentlemen. Uh, you know, Go take a break, get some food, warm up, talk to folks on the street. Uh, and just please continue doing a fabulous job. Fourth hour straight ahead. Some stations don't carry it. They're welcome to. Infowars.com forward slash show. I'll be back in 30 minutes with Stone, the, the Trump insider. Gucciardi's coming in here in 70 seconds. Infowars.com. ISIS fighters and ISIS sympathizers are invading Europe all according to plan. And with the blessings of European leaders, jihads are being waged. European women are being raped at epidemic levels. The French city of Calais has become ground zero for the migrant anarchy flooding the rest of Europe. And now a wave of 400,000 plus migrants are entering Italy. But rather than pushing on to Northern Europe, these migrants will remain in Italy as the Schengen Treaty intended to guarantee open borders is coming apart at the seams. Six countries, Germany, Austria, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Slovenia have suspended the treaty for two years and others appear ready to follow them. In many respects, Schengen no longer exists. Italy's prime minister has come under fire after ancient nude statues in Rome's Capitoloni Museum were covered up during a visit by Iran's president. And this is exactly what the ISIS leaders had planned, the conquest of Rome is one of the Islamic State's primary goals as ISIS intends on beheading the Pope on live television in St. Peter's Square to be followed by mass beheadings of Christians as Rome is converted into a Muslim city. The ISIS timeline to achieve all this is by 2020, but Europeans are in a chokehold when it comes to airing their grievances. Stringent hate speech laws and intimidation are being used to wage war on European citizens, simply asking their leaders to stop the invasion for the sake of their families. A professor who interrupted a speech by German Chancellor Angela Merkel was quickly escorted out of the room and now faces legal action from Merseburg University, which vowed to review his position and take legal action against him for damaging the faculty's reputation. In October, top security experts warned Merkel that the middle class in Germany is becoming radicalized in response to the migrant influx and that domestic unrest may occur as a result. The warning was circulated among high-ranking security officials in the federal government, according to the report. I believe the challenge is huge, huge. And if a challenge is huge, usually uh, it will trigger fears and concerns. We'll have to address them. The German government is also working with Facebook to censor and prosecute people who make anti-migrant statements on social media. Meanwhile, a Dutch man who tweeted that the country's migrant policy was a bad plan received a home visit from police and was cautioned as to his future conduct. Under these policies and the initial half million plus Muslims planting roots in Italy, the outlandish 2020 goal of the ISIS conquest of Rome doesn't seem as fantastical as previously thought. There it is, HRES 569 condemning violence, bigotry, and hateful rhetoric towards Muslims in the United States. And that is that in the House Judiciary um, brought forward by, who's that brought forward by? Who's the sponsor of that? A whole bunch of people. I'll have to... Uh, I'll have to read that for myself. What does it say? Just a resolution, and it's um, basically a, a blatant attack on the First Amendment. John Bound for Infowars.com. There's a special report by John Bound taking us into the fourth hour. This is the Alex Jones Show Overdrive, and I'm Anthony Gucciardi. I'll be with you for the next two segments, and then at the bottom of the hour, Alex Jones is coming back with a really, really groundbreaking interview with Roger Stone on what's happening tonight with Donald Trump and some insider information that you're only going to hear on The Alex Jones Show. Again, at the bottom of the hour, Alex Jones will be coming back and joining us with Roger Stone with some really, really powerful information that you do not want to miss. I'm also going to be breaking some news and covering some information, including how this is a story I saw the other day that I want to expand upon and give you some more insight on this. Americans hate the U.S. government more than ever before. This is from CBS. And we're going to look at why 
we hate the United States government and how we're in an abusive relationship with the government that we can't seem to get out of. An abusive relationship. And more so than ever, we really need a advice relationship counselor to tell us how abusive the government is. Specifically, we're also going to talk about the mainstream media unable to control the narrative with Trump dumping the debates and a lot more. We'll be right back. The Alex Jones Show, fourth hour. It's the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, your host. And coming up at the bottom of the hour, Alex Jones is coming back with Roger Stone to talk about some insider information and a key interview on the whole Trump anti-debate issue and what's really going on tonight. And also coming up at 7 p.m. Central Time, Alex and the entire InfoWars crew will be in covering not only the debates, but what Trump is doing on CNN and a lot more. But first, I wanted to cover a key issue. And it's really funny because what America needs is a relationship counselor. Because believe it or not, you are in an abusive relationship with your government. We're, we all are. We are all in an abusive and controlling relationship with our United States government establishment and the mainstream media. And what happens is when the government and media can't control our narrative and control us 100%, they freak out. They just don't know what to do. It's in utter chaos, right? And I'll use an example. So whenever there's a break in the story or, or someone actually manages to put independent analysis out there and it becomes the norm or people embrace it in the public, the mainstream media and the government both freak out. And it brings me to this story from CBS. Americans hate the U.S. government more than ever. A handful of industries are those love-to-hate type of businesses, such as cable television companies and internet service providers, right? We all hate a lot of those. But the federal government has joined the ranks of bottom-of-the-barrel industries, according to a new survey from American Customer Satisfaction Index. Americans' satisfaction level in dealing with federal agencies, from the Treasury to Homeland Security, has fallen for a third consecutive year, reaching an eight-year low. People hate the government. They can't stand the government. How terrible is it going through TSA? How terrible is it dealing with anything to do with the government these days? It's absolutely terrible. And it's hit an eight-year low, according to these polls. People are tired of it. But gee, we're still letting it happen, aren't we? We're still sitting there, and we're in this abusive relationship. And I believe it's because not only is the government abusive, but the mainstream media is controlling. And what happens is... Most Americans, as we see from these polls, are fed up and tired of it, but they don't get to express themselves, and they feel like they are kind of the minority. And then we have things like this happen. D.C. issues $1 million worth of parking tickets after a blizzard <laughs> to cars that are stuck in two feet of snow. Okay, I'm from Philadelphia. I know what this is like. When it, it, there's a real serious snowstorm, you don't just say, oh, well, gee, I'm going to go get my car from wherever I am. If you're downtown, let me just go get the car and, and go out in two feet of snow and get out of that area where I'm not supposed to park, right? Because how it'll work is you'll be able to park there and then by the next morning or something, if you're still there, you get a fine. Obviously, in a rational system where we're not run by mentally ill people, they would say, well, gee, you can't move your car in two feet of snow. But that's not what happened. D.C. snow emergency will remain in effect through Wednesday, and the city wants drivers to know it's serious about enforcing parking bans. The district has issued 1,078,000 worth of parking tickets and $65,000 of fines so far. It's even towed 656 cars at owner's expense. Visitors face $250 tickets, $100 tow tickets, and $25 per day fee until they pick up their vehicles, which you can't do because it's so snowed in. No one can even leave. But many drivers say they simply couldn't move their cars from emergency routes after the blizzard dropped two feet of snow in the district. Quote, they gave me a $250 ticket just for being snowed in. I couldn't get no help, Danielle Smith said. And then, then, then people wonder why we don't trust the government and think it's a complete joke. Because it is. It's completely absurd. It's completely insane. And I'll push that a step farther because that's kind of a silly thing with the million dollars in fines for not moving your car when it's under two feet of snow. That's kind of the silly thing. Push it further. Let's talk about this for just a minute. Michigan cities beyond Flint have concerning lead water levels, data shows. And this is a story from Michigan Live that expands into something much bigger. All eyes are fixed on Flint as the crisis over lead in the city's drinking water supply has unfolded at an accelerated pace. 
But Flint is not the only municipal or private water supply in Michigan where the drinking water is tested at or above levels that researchers and public health officials considered to be the threshold. Goes on to say their environmental quality records show that a bunch of different water supplies are exceeding the federal limit on lead and copper. Well, gee, remember, I guess a few weeks ago it was now, when I was here last time and I was able to join you guys and we spoke about how it's not just Flint. And I mentioned that water supplies around the United States have lead levels that the, according to the World Health Organization statistics and looking at the levels from different research pieces are already affecting children. And some of the effects were devastating. It's making them antisocial, crushing their intelligence, even at low levels. And the worst part is you aren't going to see the symptoms. But is the government making a big deal about that? Of course not. Of course not. And this is one of the pieces I mentioned weeks ago from Vox. It's not just Flint. Every major American city has hazardous amounts of lead hurting kids. The story of Flint, Michigan's children being poisoned by lead-contaminated drinking water has rightly shocked and scandalized the nation. But while the situation in Flint is certainly an extreme case, the problem is much more widespread than people realize. Children in essentially every city in America are being exposed to ha ha hazardous levels of toxic lead and a very little is being done about it. At the most severe levels, lead attacks the brain and central nervous system to cause coma, convulsions, and even death. Now, it's not that bad throughout the country. Obviously, there's not excessive levels where you're getting that. But it's, it goes on to say, at least mild versions of these impacts are felt at even low levels of lead exposure that cause no obvious symptoms and are previously considered safe. Okay, and it goes on to talk about resulting in reduced IQ, behavioral changes, shortening of attention span, and increased antisocial behavior and reduced educational attainment. All right, and then we wonder why we don't trust the government. The mainstream media wonders, why aren't they trusting the government and coming to them for help? We can't even have a water supply unless we freak out about one city that's being addressed, not even getting into the sodium fluoride and the antibiotics in the water supply, the other pharmaceutical drugs, not even getting into that. Just the lead issue alone. And they ask why. And how about this? Walmart. We talked last time also about Walmart and the truth about Walmart and how it's really the epitome of everything that makes America terrible. Everything that pulls us down, everything that pulls down the hardworking people that actually want to help others and build the economy, Walmart is kind of like a big fat leech that just sucks the blood out of everybody. Not just a certain class of people, just kind of sucks the blood out of a city, right? But what happens when Walmart goes away from certain towns? Well, Walmart shutdown creates new food deserts, according to Associated Press. This is such a powerful article if you really read it. We'll put it up on Infowars.com. If you really read this article, it shows you just how much we've been swallowed by Walmart. Walmart's decision to shut down 150 stores across the country means that starting Thursday, residents without cars in a neighborhood near historically black college outside Alabama will have to cross dangerous roadways on foot to get fresh produce and meat. Come Friday, folks in Coal Hill, Arkansas will need to drive 15 miles to get to the nearest supermarket and pharmacy. Low-income neighborhoods of Wichita State University in Kansas will be losing quick access to fresh groceries. So these people actually can't get fresh, real food. They could probably buy a Snickers bar at a gas station, but they can't actually buy food. And what's more sad is Walmart was their only source of real food, so-called real food. The store closings by the world's largest retailer are creating three new food deserts in these neighborhoods with nearly 15,000 residents, according to AP. One of them is in Fairfield, Alabama, a hard luck suburb of 11,000, about eight miles west of Birmingham. The Walmart there sits on a highway marked by a dreary swaths of abandoned commercial buildings, fast food restaurants, payday lending businesses, and gas stations. By late last week, it was already out of fresh food, and shoppers who picked over the remaining items also worried the store shutdown could affect competitive prices. That gives the stores the opportunity to raise their prices, but you don't have anywhere else to go, according to a local. Look, Walmart is a huge leech, and look what happens when even they shut down, which in my view is a good thing. It just shows how controlling they were over these towns. The only place they had to go was Walmart for fresh food, for real food. That's the only place they had to go. All right? And look, it's essential to support real operations and real businesses. 
And that's why at InfoWarsLife.com, DNA Force is 25% off right now. 25% off the original price. As far as I'm concerned and aware, this is an unprecedented sale, and it's your opportunity to try DNA Force for 20% off. And also Survival Shield X2, Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, you name it. It's all at InfoWarsLife.com. Support a real operation that isn't Walmart sucking away the blood of the middle class, lower class, upper, upper class, the whole country itself. Now, we're going to come and talk about some more stories here, including a woman who says she's a cat trapped in the wrong body and hisses at dogs. And coming up again at the bottom of the hour, though, Alex Jones is going to come back in studio and speak with Roger Stone on what's happening tonight with Donald Trump, the debates, a bunch of insider information you won't be hearing anywhere else. But let's crack into a few stories here. So this came across my desk, and I thought this was interesting. Intelligent people are genetically predispo predisposed to be healthier, experts find. University of Edinburgh suggests that gene variants linked to thinking skills are also linked to health. For the first time, scientists have grown, shown that the intelligence is linked to good health, so bl those blessed with brains are also less likely to become sick, develop disease, or die early. The reason, they say, is down to genes. An international team led by the university discovered the gene variants make people smart, also protect them against illness. What I would like to see is that if that means it's lifestyle changes or it's just a genetic thing that protects you from being sick, I also think that super intelligent people sometimes totally forego their body and don't care because they're so dedicated to something that they end up getting sick. Well, we'll be right back with covering more news and talking more about the interview that's coming up with Roger Stone, Alex Jones. Again, we'll be here at the bottom of the hour. And don't forget the live coverage with Alex and the InfoWars crew starting tonight at 7 Central Standard Time for the debate and Donald Trump's uh, event as well. We'll be right back. We're back. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. This is The Alex Jones Show. It's the fourth hour. And next segment, Alex is coming back in studio with a very special interview with Roger Stone. He's going to cover everything that's happening tonight with Trump, some insider information, the debates, and of course, he'll be back again at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time with the whole InfoWars crew to cover the debates and Trump's event all in one. That will be available at InfoWars.com forward slash show or just go to InfoWars.com. So, you know, we're talking about people hating the government. CBS says hatred towards the government is at an all-time high. People hate the TSA. People hate everything about the government. It's horrible. It's horrible dealing with the United States government. Oftentimes, they simply cannot be trusted, or pretty much every time. And it reminds me of two key videos I wanted to share with you, one of which, you know, we've always been told, we're going to get the troops out of Afghanistan. We're going to bring them home. We're going to bring them all home. But, of course, that never happened. And, in fact, report U.S. troops may stay in Afghanistan for decades. Apparently, he says, what we've learned is that you can't really ever leave. Let's play that video. As my colleague Greg Jaffe and I report today, U.S. military leaders are quietly talking about a years or decades long presence in Afghanistan. They think that's what uh, will be required to help the Afghan forces be able to fend off the Taliban and this lingering Al Qaeda presence that continue to threaten not just Afghanistan, but American national security. And of course, we're probably never coming back, right? And it also reminds me of this one video where we were told again that Hillary Clinton would never use any form of unclassified system to transfer classified information. But according to this video, actually she used a BlackBerry to communicate classified information. Let's go to this video. When I first came to the department, we had Wangs. Now we have Blackberries. And it has changed the way diplomacy is done. Uh, two years ago, Secretary Clinton was at the EU, it was then EU 27 meeting. They were having the meeting with their Blackberries, uh, transferring language back and forth. So time and time again, we're lied to and told you're safe, everything's fine. We're going to bring the troops home. We would never use an unclassified system. That would be terrible. That would be against everything we stand for. But over and over and over again, we're lied to. Just like I mentioned earlier, a million dollars in fines put out to everyone in D.C., for parking their car in two feet of snow, unable to move it. But hey, you're still illegally parked, so we're going to ticket you anyway. And the quotes in there say, well, my, my car had two feet of snow. We're unable to move it. We're unable to get on the roads because they're completely blocked off because of government advisories. But they say, it doesn't matter. We're going to take your money anyway. And by the way, Flint, Michigan, oh, that's a, a totally crazy, off-the-wall, outlandish example, when in reality there's lead levels across the United States and other contaminants in the water we don't even have to get into that are hitting the, hitting the kids with no symptoms, reducing their IQ. 
So it's no surprise that we don't trust the United States government. Let's hit some news before Alex comes back again in this next segment coming up with Roger Stone to detail a lot more information on what's happening with Trump tonight, give you the full scoop, as well as the debates. So the Zika virus is spreading explosively, according to the World Health Organization. And this is really a tragedy because this is essentially a virus that if you get it, it's not that big of a deal. You have some flu-like symptoms. But of course, if you're pregnant, the cranium of the child is super, super small. And they have developmental disorders and birth defects that are pretty much really tragic. And it says it could expand to about a million and 1.4 million people. Here's a little bit of a relief article, though. Some similar ones we've posted up at Infowars.com. Woman says she is a cat trapped in the wrong body. She hisses at dogs, hates water, and claims she can even see better at night. Who knows? Maybe she's true. Want to feel better? Move to Hawaii, Alaska, and your next insurance agent will be insurance agent will be a robot. All right, Alex is coming back in this next segment. Hang on a couple minutes, and he's joined with Roger Stone to give the full details on the Trump event tonight, as well as the debate. We'll be right back. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. This is the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. And I tell you, we really see the beginnings of the collapse uh, of the mainstream media uh, as people like Trump realize and the public realizes the media doesn't run the narrative anymore. The facts and the personalities do. Because now Trump can go announce something and end up having more TV cameras, more alternative media, more video feeds, more coverage than the stupid Fox debate. And I'm not attacking Fox, but Megyn Kelly does have it out for him. But the reason he's walking away clearly is they've got all these setup artists there. Everybody's going to gang up. They're going to really try to uh, bring him down. And why should he do that when he's bringing the audience? Why should he bring the rope for them to potentially go after themselves? And while we're getting stone on, there was this promo that McBreen did. We've hardly aired it. It's so good. Uh, where he shows all the mainstream media attacking us. And what's that done? Made us bigger. But they still don't get their discredited, even though all the polls and numbers show. Did we find that? Well, we can play it off YouTube. It's our Facebook featured video, actually. We can just go play it right off Facebook for everybody. Uh, it's up at Alexander Emmerich Jones on Facebook uh, for folks that want to be able to, to uh, see that because... It just illustrates everything that we're facing and dealing with as a culture. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that InfoWars could become so successful in the face of the mainstream media is some of our research, our work, our hard work. But, but a lot of it has to do with just the fact that the system tries to be as nasty as it can to condition us and to prepare us that we will just accept evil. They're, they're trying to turn the world upside down. And that's not working. They want to break our will. So don't let them break our will. By the way, uh, we can't get them on Skype. It's cool. Let's just get them on the phone, guys. Thanks. Let's just stop stop now trying that. Uh, Anthony Gucciardi, you've been hosting the last 30 minutes. I mean, just since you've been at InfoWars three years, watching the huge changes that have happened, and we're just a microcosm. The mainstream media is a control freak system, and we're in an abusive relationship with it, and where we allow it to control our narrative and our beliefs. And they're freaking out when things happen, like Trump saying, I'm not going to do the uh, debate. I'm going to go do my own thing. Anything against their control freak mission totally sends them for a loop. Notice, if you watch the mainstream media, actually, they don't know how to respond to that. I agree. You guys said something in my ear. What was that? Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I've got low audio here today. Uh, fantastic. Well, let's go to our guest. I appreciate Mr. Stone joining us today. Uh, Mr. Stone has obviously been on the show quite a bit the last few months. He's a best-selling author, researcher, and been a major political strategist uh, and analyst for a whole bunch of different uh, presidents. Uh, and Mr. Stone, thank you so much for joining us. I know that you're reportedly going to be, Richard Reeves was telling me on Fox News tonight, uh, while Trump is overdoing his own event, you'll be uh, basically talking about the campaign some i think this is really smart what trump's doing but you can give us the inside baseball i haven't talked to you since he announced this uh a few days ago what what's really going on here sir i mean alex this is nothing short of brilliant first of all let me say thanks for having me on it's always great to be among fellow patriots uh donald trump has roiled the establishment like never before and he has grabbed the narrative so the final days in the countdown before iowa is all about donald trump Will he show up? Won't he show up? Why isn't he showing up? What are the issues? I spoke to him about an hour ago, and uh, he is really in great spirit. He's predicting a massive crowd at his counter event. 
is predicting uh, incredible ratings. It's now going to be covered live by both CNN and the Sinclair Communications Network. That could reach as many as 40, 50 million people. Mike Huckabee has decided to show up at the Trump event. Rick Santorum will be showing up at the Trump event. Alex, very significant because both of them have small but significant pockets of support in Iowa. Uh, it is conceivable. Wow, well, because just an hour ago, sir, sorry to interrupt you, you just talked to Trump. Just an hour ago, he was hinting at others. Are you announcing here, or, or has he already announced uh, that uh, he's going to have them there? Let me put it this way. I know for a certainty that both will be there. Wow, that is now, breaking is this, news. Is, is this a signal to their voters in Iowa that maybe your first choice, say Mike Huckabee, can't make it, and therefore you should vote for Donald Trump since he's elevating your choice? Does this even mean that there's an endorsement in the works? very hard to say. But uh, the, there's no question here that he's grabbed the moment, that he has stolen the show yet again. And this is to the consternation of Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz can't get any traction. His attempts to challenge Trump to a one-on-one -on -one debate fell flat. Uh, and in the meantime, voters in Iowa are starting to look at the real Ted Cruz. Why, for example, in Heidi Cruz's Wikipedia page, is her service as Deputy National Security Advisor to Condoleezza Rice. Why is that missing? Why is her service as Deputy Trade Representative to Robert Zalik uh, handling China specifically? Why is that missing from her resume? We know she works at Goldman. We know she's a member on the Council on Foreign Relations. We now know Ted Cruz got sweetheart secret loans from Goldman and Citibank. This guy is going to reform Wall Street? He's going to take on Wall Street? I think Liberty voters are beginning to wonder whether he's a Trojan horse. I agree with you. Uh, he's been neck and neck in polls uh, lately, a few weeks ago, a few points behind Cruz. And some polls Cruz is ahead and some polls Trump's ahead. I know you're a straight shooter. I talked to you months ago and you said Trump's got it everywhere but Iowa. Uh, but I still think he's going to, you know, after that, get New Hampshire and other states. But 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 Iowa's the big one. Uh, has he narrowed uh, uh, that gap or, or has he surpassed it from your political expertise running so many big elections? Very hard to say because a caucus is not a primary. In a primary, you just show up, you go into the machine or the, or the booth, and you mark a ballot or you check off a name and you walk out. A caucus is very different. You've got to sit and listen to speeches for three hours, and then you vote by a show of hands. So this is very much an organizational exercise. I do know, and this is incredible, last night out of the phone bank in Des Moines, uh, as a random test, they called 1,000 Democrats. These are working-class, white, working-class, suburban Democrats. They asked them two questions. One, did you vote for Barack Obama? Ninety percent said yes. When they asked them, would they come caucus for Donald Trump, over 300 people said yes. Now, in Iowa, you can just show up at the polls and change your registration right then and there by signing a form and then vote for Donald Trump. This proves what I have been saying. He has crossover appeal in the general election. Uh, and to the extent that Iowa is up for grabs, and it is, it's very tight, uh, it could be swayed by an influx of conservative Democrats coming over to uh, make America great again. Now, obviously, she tried to make a name for herself even bigger, Megyn Kelly, by making stuff about Trump, by being nasty. Uh, but I, you, you've always been really honest with us. I mean, the, really, that's just the excuse then is what you're saying, or correct me if I'm wrong. Trump knows that he makes the debate. He now only elevates these other candidates by himself being there. He makes them five, ten times the money in advertising. He asked CNN to give some of the money to vets. They said no before. Now he's leaving, giving it all to the vets. Uh, how could anybody say that this isn't just an act of genius? It's also a really good thing to do when these greedy networks don't want to give money to the wounded warriors. I mean, shame on them, especially Fox News, that takes so much advertising money from the wounded warriors. They should be giving some of their time for advertising to the wounded warriors. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's just a fact. If you're not supporting Trump and supporting uh, he, uh, the debate he's really having, then you're actually trying to steal money from veterans. And then I watch the media spin this and say Trump wanted money or he wouldn't come. Lying bastards. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Roger, but it makes me mad. Well, here, here's a, a factoid that I think you'll enjoy, Alex. A TV spot during this debate two days ago before Trump announced his pullout was selling for $300,000. That same TV spot for a corporate advertiser is now going for seventy. 
in prop eight. Wow. So uh, you can see why Bill O'Reilly uh, and uh, Sean Hannity uh, and uh, much of the talent uh, at Fox that is friendly with Trump are beseeching him to come to the debate. I mean, look, watching the debate without Trump would be watching the Jackson 5 without Michael. I mean, you might want to tune in for Tito and Jermaine, but I doubt it. Wow. Well, in the time we have left with you, sir, I know you're very, very busy. Uh, I heard from Richard, but is that accurate that you will be, though, on Fox tonight? Uh, and Megyn Kelly has invited me to uh, come on post-debate and give my analysis. I must say she has always been fair to me. She has always given me the opportunity to stand up for Donald Trump, for which I am grateful because I'm just trying to reach the people. So, yes, I will be on with Megyn Kelly tonight, uh, and you'll be able to hear a debate analysis from the uh, – from the Trump perspective. I mean, I'll be honest. I like Fox News a lot more than the other networks because they cover more patriot-based stuff. Um, but at the same time, they kind of want to run the liberty movement, not not grow it. Uh, and then you've got the folks that own it, you know, involved with Hillary and things. So, I, you know, they're trying to keep feet in both camps like the Koch brothers and others. And then when she says things about Donald Trump that aren't true, that was fine. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think she's attractive. I do think she's smart. I don't, I don't think it's Megyn Kelly at the same time. But let's just face it. She does have some anti-gunners on. She probably is a closet liberal in my view. And that's fine. I just think she should be honest about the fact. And I think the fact that she doesn't like Trump only only makes him that much stronger. I mean, I think that's why he continues to rise in the polls. Separately, sir, you're the political expert. I, I'm just a guy that you know studies globalism in general and what's happening. Looking nationally past Iowa, if he wins by a few points, what happens? If he loses by a few points, I mean, I look at a wide range of scientific polls as you do. It just appears he just keeps widening his lead uh, more and more. And I know at Davos, uh, the a major globalist were in the news in the Financial Times of London, the editor saying, quote, the super elite must stop him internationally, must give money. I mean, when foreign newspapers uh, are saying the elite need to stop Trump and, and do anything, that is the biggest endorsement of Trump. Because when a newspaper endorses somebody and it's establishment, I don't like them. Having the Times of London say we must stop Trump, I mean, that is the biggest endorsement I could imagine. Well, I got to tell you, Alex, I, I know the D.C. Wall Street crowd. I've been in American politics 40 years. I eat with these people. I drink with these people. I prefer it when they pay. They are wetting their pants over the prospect of a Donald Trump presidency because all their globalist plans for world government and regional government go out the window. Uh, in Trump, they have someone completely unviable and, and someone who cannot and will not be bullied, as he is demonstrating to uh, Fox News at this very moment. Uh, I think he's the last best chance to save this country uh, in this inexorable march towards one world government. Uh, this is our best shot. Now, I don't argue, as I did in the Fox Opinion page this week, that he's a pure conservative. He's not. I do argue he's the best choice for conservatives and liberty-minded voters in 2016. There's a difference. I don't care about purity. I care about integrity. Uh, and somebody's going to stand up for the U.S. Constitution and our sovereignty. And the only candidate I see who's really going to do that, who can win, is Donald Trump. Uh, it is uh, this national review, this national review revolt against Trump. A number of the fellows who signed that that agreement are friends of mine, or that manifesto are friends of mine. Uh, but they're purists. They're intellectuals. I'm in the business of getting people elected. Only Trump can beat Hillary Clinton. Because only Trump will get right up in her grill on, on her abuse of women, on the mass. Sure, that's why the establishment doesn't want him there. And, and, and exactly. separately, with the FBI indictments, uh, they're reporting the FBI is going to go public if, they, if the Justice Department doesn't move for indictment. They're clearly brought Sanders to the White House now. Uh, they've got Biden being brought out of deep freeze. Uh, looks like they're starting to panic. Or, or is that hype? What's your inside baseball, Roger Stone? I think she's in deep trouble, even with her own. The Democrats have never liked the yoke of the Clintons. They accepted it because they had to. We know that there's animosity between Obama and Valerie Garrett and the Clintons. Uh, Comrie, the FBI director, is a straight shooter, career law enforcement man. He's going to make his recommendation public. I cannot believe that if the Justice Department doesn't choose to prosecute Hillary for her myriad of crimes, that he will resign, causing a firestorm. You've now got 125 FBI agents pouring over the Clinton Foundation. 
Alice, the Clinton Foundation is a flush fund for grifters. This is a $2 billion global fraud and growing every day. What, the, what they've done now at the, at the Clinton Foundation is to open subsidiaries in a number of countries that have no transparency or reporting requirements in their charitable laws. So they can wash millions of dollars through Canada, for example. Total racketeering, total to transparent, them. absconding with the record. I mean, it's so naked. She's been caught in triplicate in the emails, how to cut off top secret off the top or classified, said she didn't have more, perjury to Congress. I mean... Why aren't they frying her politically already? I mean, she makes Nixon look like an angel. Yeah, it's amazing. And I, I think you've got the scenario exactly right. They, they knock her out of the way. The establishment types knock her out of the way because they know she cannot beat Trump. Uh, and they substitute this bumbler, Joe Biden. Well, don't think we can't beat him, too. This guy's pathetic. He's run for president twice before. He didn't even get out of the team. <clears throat> Uh, so I, I think that their party is going to be in disarray. Now you have the question of whether the American people want four more years of what they've had for eight years. And the answer is no. Hillary's forced to embrace Obama to win the Democratic nomination, but that's the kiss of death in a race against Donald Trump. In what is a change election, people want a radical change in direction in this country. They do. And... I tell you, uh, I just absolutely love Donald Trump, and I'm going to be voting for him, uh, not just in the primary, but in the general election, because he genuinely has scared the elite. It's not theater. They're putting all their money against him. They're running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And if we just keep working in the system, we're going to lose. We've got to do the right thing. Justice be done. May the heavens fall and put Trump in there. And what I like about Trump, is he said a lot of bad stuff over the years. He admits, I was a businessman. I was focused on working in the system. Now they're destroying my country. I'm fighting. Is the growth curve of his knowledge. And when he says something that's wrong, he comes back and says, no, I've changed my view. Here's why. And then it's right. Uh, and he doesn't back down. He's very presidential. Uh, and uh, he's sophisticated. And he, and, and he wants to make America great. He isn't a globalist that wants to sell out America for international power. You know, there is no power internationally. It's illusion. The whole world is in deep trouble. We need America to be strong. And and he's the only one that does that. And, you know, Ted Cruz, I like Ted Cruz on many fronts, but his pedigree is globalist, and I'll forgive that. We're going to skip this network break. I will... I will, I, will, I will forgive that because he has some good votes in the Senate, but it doesn't mean I still completely trust him. And so that's what I'm getting at is the fact that the system is so scared of Trump for real, because I'm a media analyst. I know when something's real and when it's not, tells me he's the guy to go for. I want to spend a few more minutes with you, Mr. Stone. I know you have to go. That's why I skipped this break. But Anthony Gucciardi, any points you've got, any questions for uh, Mr. Stone, because you're digging into this political analysis as well. Absolutely. I think regardless of what you think, <clears throat> it's amazing that they always say, oh, you're a flip-flopper when you advance your thinking on something. Like you're not allowed to grow and understand something and advance your thought patterns and your political ideology, right? So when someone well, attacks you using your past, example it's insane. Of that is, of course, the issue of abortion. There is no question whatsoever that Trump and his wife used to be pro-abortion. Then they had a child late in life, Baron Trump, and they cherished that child. That changed their entire worldview. A movement that doesn't accept converts is doomed. Exactly. I don't care. I don't care what he thought 15 years ago. I care what he thinks today. Today, Donald Trump is 100 percent pro-life. Now, the liberals won't give him the benefit of the doubt. If he if he had switched from being pro-abortion to be, uh, pardon me, anti-abortion to pro-abortion, he'd be a hero. That's a perfect example. Well, I've got a good feeling for things, not just politically, but in my gut watching it and. I can literally see that Trump has grown a lot. All of us grow. He says he's grown. Uh, you know, it's like Louis Farrakhan, you know, said, I've grown. I don't want to be like I was. And I've, I've woken up and he listens to my show and I've changed him. You know, Trump sees what's happening because of the Internet. He's now learning all these political things. Stone, I mean, I mean, I met Stone like 10 years ago at, 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 at anti-globalist meetings, uh, at uh, JFK events. He's a top JFK writer. And I didn't realize that it was the Roger Stone that was the famous political guy. I, mean, I knew he'd, and then I kind of looked at, whoa, you know, it's like this guy is fighting the establishment coming out of it. It, you know, because now there's more of us. Now we can do it. Now we can do it outside the system. We can take over the system. And so many people 
mainly because of the control of the churches by the Ford Foundation and by the Rockefeller Brothers Foundation, the World Council of Churches, teaching them you can't win, evil's going to take over, you can't ever fix anything, you're powerless. Okay, let's just lay down and wait for the rapture. I mean, give me a break, folks. My whole life I fought, whether it was bullies or then in radio or whatever it is, and I fought, I've been just as smart as the bad guy or smarter, I beat them. If you take action, you work 18 hours a day, you will win. We can kick the globalist butts. We can make this country free again. We can move away from dystopia towards liberty, not promising some utopia, but it takes radical change, radical aggression at the establishment. And if Trump gets elected and doesn't do what he said he's going to do, he will be crucified, and he knows that. So he wants to be George Washington, not Benedict Arnold. I'm telling you, I believe he wants to try to save this country with our help. And Stone, you've known him for decades. Is that what's in your gut as well? Yeah, look, I, I've come a long way, Alex. I, I'm a sentimental Republican. I worked in the U.S. Senate. I worked in the House. I worked for three American presidents. I worked on nine presidential campaigns. It took me a while to figure out that both parties are in it together. The two-party duopoly is selling this country down the river. Uh, they slap each other on the back and go out to dinner as soon as they turn the TV cameras off. It's a scam, and it's all run on corporate money uh, by the global giants. Donald Trump has broken up that whole narrative. The, the lobbyist consultant class who've been running this country are petrified about the real reform. That's it. They've right. hijacked the country. They don't know who he is. They're not sure. They just know he wants to cut their system off, and they don't like it. So you want the crooks we know we've got or the guy that wants to actually target the system and go after it? We're going to have debate coverage tonight, 7, uh, right until right through until like 11 at night with Jakari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo, myself, Anthony Gucciardi. We'll be playing clips from Mr. Stone's uh, interview here live today as well. Stonezone.com. Find his book on the Clintons uh, and their sexual activities and their sexual crimes of oppression uh, right there on his site. Thank you so much uh, for giving us so much time. And I look forward to talking to you, uh, obviously, in the next few days in the aftermath. If you can pop back in, Mr. Stone. I would love to. Alex, never give up the fight. We will not, sir. We'll have the feed from Trump. We'll have the feed of our uh, coverage of, of, of his event and uh, Fox, and we'll have a lot more tonight. Infowars.com forward slash show. Great job, Anthony Gucciardi. I want to go out to break here with a promo clip McBrain put together of just some of the media demonization against Infowars. The same stuff happening to Trump. That's what you need to see to know folks are taking action. And then look at what we stand for and what we've done. We want to defeat tyranny and secure the next generation's freedom. I don't want to rule people. I don't want to rule the world like Ted Cruz said when I was 18. When I was 18, I wanted to free the world. I wanted to change the world. We're going to do it. It's only when evil starts to take over that the good men start to stand up, and we have. And I am burning with the fires of liberty, and I'm here with you to take action. Tonight, 7 o'clock. The transmission ends in four minutes. Here is the intro. Talk show host is Alex Jones. He's a he's a conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host Alex Jones. Alex Jones. His name is Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Alex Jones, a nut job radio guy. Talk show host Alex Jones. A man who trades in such sinister conspiracy theories, you have to wonder if he really believes half of what he says. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. Hate speech. Can anything be done to stop? the hatred i think alex was the one who took the pro-gun position 1776 will commence again if you try to take off firearms i don't want that man to have a gun alex jones is a 9-11 truther that conspiracy theory comes from the mother of all conspiracy theories it's an internet talk show called info wars i heard that on alex jones so it's Please. true Dave. I heard it on Alex Jones, so I know Large, it's true. You're making some very serious allegations against the U.S. government, saying that they stage attacks, they allow them to occur in the United States against U.S. Let's citizens. Let's declassify. Alex Jones may sound crazy. I think that Alex Jones is a lunatic. That man's a threat to this country. He's a conspiracy theorist. Deeply, I think, racist. I just got called racist by MSNBC. He's considered legit among the crazies. Challenge Alex Jones to a boxing match, show up with a semi-automatic that you got <laughs> legally, and pop him. I I'd love to see that <laughs> in uniform. <laughs> Keep shoving lies at your audience, jackasses. I like that guy. That is the best.
have gangsters running this country. Criminals, gangsters. The bigger this war gets, the more freedoms we lose. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139